check that we're live on Twitch, which we should be. Come on, Twitch. There we go. Cool. Hi, Internet. Welcome to episode two of our Fandelver and Below the Shattered Obelisk campaign. If you missed last week or two weeks ago, I guess I should say, this is ideally going forward, we're going to be a weekly stream that you'll be able to catch here on Twitch. But there is edited versions with breaks and things removed over on you, my secondary channel. It's also now a podcast as of today. So you can catch all of us in a variety of different locations. So anyway, with that being said, I'll just kind of run down the list and, and have everybody introduce themselves. And then we'll kind of get into a recap of what happened last time. And then we'll dive into the brand new game tonight. So Robert, give us a, a little bit about who you are and, and who you're playing. Hello, Internet. I'm Captain Robert. I play actual plays all over the Internet, specifically on my channel, twitch.tv slash Captain Robert and YouTube TV slash Captain Robert. Super happy to be here playing my cleric and a continuation of my Barley family. Bronson Barley, the Lion of Leyland. All right. And LB, how about you? Hello, everybody. I am LB Hack. I'm up. You can find my <laughs> stuff, my personal stuff at LB Hack. I'm up on Twitter, Mastodon Threads. I forgot Mastodon was a all... thing. I know. <laughs> but all of my streaming content is on the Hack Recklessly YouTube and the Hack Recklessly Twitch channel. If you want some other cool podcast stuff, one with Ted in it, there is a Spotify playlist or a podcast with Ted for our Monster of the Week game. The Trench Coats and the Weed is up on Spotify, so check that out. Tonight, I am playing Soot. She is a changeling druid. Jonathan, how about you? Hola, buenas tardes. My name is Jonathan. I will be playing Zenith Espalian Xander Yerkmeister. I'll let you figure out the initials on your own. And we are <coughs> just, we're just having a good old time. We're just, <laughs> we're just hanging out and trying to figure out life, going from privileged but naive, rich kid to adventure, and it's confusing. Uh, you can find me everywhere as Latinos Against Spooky Shit on all my platforms. You know, Twitch, X, or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Sabretooth. I don't know. I'm just naming prehistoric animals. I thought that was a bit. You know. yeah. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus. Sabretooth. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, but super happy to be here. Super excited. All right. And last but not least, Jake. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Jake. I will be playing Bishop Frisian. He is the paladin stabby guy of the group. I, You can listen to my podcast at Legends Rerolled if we're doing that stuff. And yeah, I'm just super psyched to be here. You know, we took the week off and I was sad, but we're here now, so I'm glad. And I, I'm ready to cast a spell. That's my goal for this episode. <laughs> Let's get one out. Okay, well, to, to that point... The party did start their trek towards the town of Fandolin on a way to help their good friend Gundren Rockseeker bring some supplies. He's really excited. Him and his brothers have big news. They've got stuff going on. They said, hey, we're going to go ahead, secure stuff. You guys bring these oxen, this cart along and, and get it all, you know, take, we'll head up there. We'll meet you there. They traveled along, they found, they kind of got ambushed in the middle of the road as they saw there were two loose horses and drag marks kind of dragging some humanoid size shapes away. They were ambushed by some goblins. They <laughs> saved one of them to question them and then seemingly were going to release them. Turns out, apparently that was never the plan as he was cut down <laughs> in the back as he went to run away. A wild magic surge happened, a fire elemental was summoned, and with impunity slaughtered everything in the cave, including potentially everything. Sildar Hallwinter, the Lord's Alliance member and friend of Gundren Rockseeker, potentially traveling alongside with him on horseback. The party now has Sildar's body, Scorched Body, in tow, and... We basically ended at the end of that session where everybody leveled up to level two. So big moves for a lot of people, right? That's some subclasses for our druid. Paladin actually becomes a usable class yeah. at level two. It's it's really, it's good <laughs> stuff all around. Um, so uh, yeah, with that being said, I have some box text that I'm going to read because we're going to kind of 
We're not going to make you walk your way all the way back out of the forest, back out to the main road. We'll say you're able to gather your cart, the two oxen, as well as the two horses that were left behind, and then bring them, and you'll kind of set off on your way down the road to Phandalin. Before I read you this box text as we arrive in the town of Phandalin, is there anything that I should know that your characters are doing, would have done in this little bit of traversal or, or things of that nature? No? No, no, I think I, we're just rolling in. Well, I think Sid might ha have a group meeting. Okay. <clears throat> so Sid, sitting at, at the front of this carriage is going to kind of lean back and just say to the, the people sitting there, guys, can we talk for a second? Yes, of course. I I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page when it comes to, like, everything. Just, you know, if we come across things again, I don't want there to be any confusion and, and make the, the fights go more difficultly. So when we come across things like goblins or bad things on the road, I mean, obviously, we're going to attack them and stuff. But, like, the whole promising someone they can go free and then and then killing them is a little rocky on my moral compass. So I just wanted to talk about it before we, like, took that any further. Hmm. Well, Bronson, I mean, that's <laughs> mostly to you, my good man. I was thinking this was actually pointed towards you. Um, oh, but... well, in that case, my deepest apologies, my dear sir, and I will not do that again. I'll Instead, I'll either kill them flat out in combat or release them peacefully. Right. I mean, I'm not above like capturing people and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it wouldn't be good for them to go back and warn everybody. I understand that. But, you know, I just I want to make sure that our, our moralities are so somewhat in line. You know, I didn't think we'd be doing a lot of fighting. I was more excited for like studying the rocks. But like, you know, I, I think we all did really well in the fight and everyone really played their part. So that was great. But yeah, uh, I guess is, does anybody have any you know, outstanding things that they want to address? Yes. Right. So it was a war crime then. <laughs> well, not at war, so I don't think it technically counts. Okay, right. Okay, right. It can only be... Take out a little notebook that just says things to know. So, I think right. it's just not might a be war a... crime. Might just Maybe be a some regular... Maybe measures to be laying on Bishop... On the first time that we've worked together, I understand that things can get heated in the moment, Bishop, and questionable decisions can be made afterwards. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Your apology is good enough for me. Well, I am most deeply and sincerely mm. sorry, and oh, yeah, right. I, I think that's something that is called deflecting. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say I don't think that you're exactly you know faultless here, Bronson. I think that. You are very eager when it comes to combat. I love that. It's just like, it's, I feel so safe when I'm around you. But, you know, maybe not charging into battle all right. the time without talking about it first or like... Yeah, I've, I've never felt so safe and mm -hmm. so in danger at the same time. Well, I can understand navigating these territories without someone of my prowess. Before I arrived here, there was chaos. There was no order. I can understand even thinking of it can, can bring a tear to my own eye. The most important part here, this place is safe. Mm. And you understand that? Because if the commerce stops, there's a lot more mouths that don't get fed than just the bloodshed that's on the road. You have to think about these farmers. And what they go through. And if we let every palm nicking goblin run through here and stop progress, what kind of a township is this? You'll understand over time. You'll get a little less savory. But I can right. understand sometimes difficult decisions are made. So you support the farmers? Of course. So you're pro-union? Of course. Huh. It'd be insane not to be pro-union. No, no, I understand. No. Great. Yeah, but it's just Papa says that. 
unions of. Well, Don't you know, it's the large unionized. ones, not the small ones. We're 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 for Main Street over here. Right. Gotcha. Right. The mom and pop unions, of course. Yeah. Right. Um, small business unions. <laughs> those agreements that everyone that works here is family that's a union right no you don't have to have a written contract you know to know that you're family at business here a good firm handshake that's how you guarantee a christmas mm. bonus it's if you don't have your word what do you have right. Right, so that's why my dad never shook anybody's hand well, yeah. <laughs> yeah who's christ <laughs> and Jesus what did we miss christ. oh of, of course, course. Uh. Yeah. Right, it's a it's non-common. I mean, as the cleric, right? I feel like it's yeah. a not, not a lot of people know. I guess Lathander's middle name and last name, apparently. <laughs> yeah, uh, JC. <laughs> yeah, to his friends, I guess. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm writing this down. Jesus, God, Lathander no. Christ is a thing that's gonna now be. This is canonical to our world of Faerun as of right now. Just All like right. the Brosians, right? With the Brosian yes. horse. <laughs> I also remember a canonical region <laughs> of, yeah. of fandom. Uh, the time of the Brosian. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's Please. people. You find a lot of people <laughs> that you guys will, you might learn. Maybe you know, maybe some of you are aware. The Brosian Empire, it's on a lot of people's minds, mm. right? They mm. always are thinking mm. about it. So it's part of the Forgotten Realms that are yeah. 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 Very, rarely you know. remembered. Some people will ask you, what's your Brosian your Empire? Empire, yeah. Right, yeah. It's a yeah. thing. It's a common... Yeah. Well, well, that's my... <laughs> that's <laughs> your Brosian Empire, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, with that out of the way, I feel like I will get to my, my box text here. I'm also curious... I did have the ability to launch a Fandelver map or a Fandelin map in D and D Beyond. I don't know how that works for you guys, but that's a thing I was able to do. I don't know are if you, it's. I don't know are how you doing you, it now. I did it. Is, I don't know how. Is you, the map in the room with us now, Tech? Yeah, I don't like. I can see all of your guys's roles in the map, so I don't know how you guys launch it. You might just go to the campaign and hit launch, but. If not, it's not a big deal. I can describe it anyway. In the oh. oh, yeah, no, that's it. Does that yeah, work? Yeah. Campaign and hit launch. Yeah. <laughs> I, I literally just did the same thing. Yeah. That's why I got so yeah. I dropped, they're very tiny for some reason, but I dropped your tokens for everybody on the map. They're like super small. Oh, they you are. Zoom way in. <clears throat> but at the where? more important, they're if kind of in. Zoom in too scale. And you'll see them. Can I ping? They're, they're like right in the middle. Yeah. They're, oh, I see oh, them. Mother- they're like the tiniest the of scale. dots. It is to scale, right? Because you can look at the scale. Anyway, wow, the reason that I bring this up is this will just be easier for me to just point to places or kind of let you guys know what I'm talking about. I can, because mm. I can, I think I can, yeah, okay, I can and do this. And immediately everybody starts playing things. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I am I am a dungeon master. I do know how these things go. So we can go ahead and put this on the screen here for all of you watching as well to give you an idea as to what we're talking about. So I'll read off my box text and then... I'm actually wondering if I should just switch to the Dungeon Masters one that has the labels for all of the things, because you're going to find it out anyway. So I'll read my box text. The rutted track emerges from a wooded hillside, and you catch your first glimpse of Phandalin. The town consists of 40 or 50 simple log buildings, some built on old fieldstone foundations. More old ruins, crumbling stone walls covered in ivy and briars, surround the newer houses and shops, showing how this must have been a much larger town in centuries past. Most of the newer buildings are set on the sides of the cart track, which widens into a muddy main street as it climbs towards a ruined manor house on a hillside at the east side of town. As you approach, you can see children playing on the town green and town folk tending to chores or running errands at the shops in the town. Many people look up and smile as you approach, but all return to their business as you go by. So, that being said, I'm just curious now, if because we're all here, if I go into a map and I just launch this, will it just take us? Added Fandolin. So I think I can do overlays if I delete this. Oh, hang on, I'm launching a new map. Hey, did that, did that work for you guys? It's loaded. It certainly did. All right. So, um, 
I think this is just going to be easier. It's not giving away any secrets. And that way, if we reference an area, so you guys are kind of coming in from the northern part of this map here from the Tribor Trail. So you're kind of up at the top and you're making your way down. So you <coughs> were to take the supplies that you had to Barthen's Provisions, which happens to be, as you can see, one of the first stops on the way in to town. But I don't know if you have other concerning things to deal with, like the charred corpse that you happen to have, or other thoughts on your mind. If you'd like to go to an inn to establish a place to stay, you guys are now, you did it, you made it to the, the titular location. What would you like to do? Charred is such a strong word. Um, it's um, unfortunately uh, accurate. Scorched. Well, well done. Uh, is that is that better? Well, <laughs> is Gundren here? We don't know. You don't know. You did see the two drag marks from the the horses. You saw Sildar's body that you now have with you, but you did not see anybody else inside the cave other than the goblins and bugbears that were summarily dispatched. So it's possible. You do know that he is a triplet, right? There are three brothers. So perhaps the other ones are here. It's really up to you to to kind of I'll tell you, you want to if Bothin there, I see the sign above his store, the provisions. If he is <laughs> expecting this shipment, perhaps he knows the rock seekers. I think that might be a first stop and then maybe there's a church or a, oh, some sort of thing here or perhaps a cemetery that we can acquire a plot for our good friend absolutely we can go over to the shrine of luck place ceremonies and send this proper burial again he is very rich so he probably would be able to be resurrected in some way i mean if, if we can sure yeah great that would be wonderful for him, and we can try. Yeah, I just think that's a you know an option. <laughs> if it is an option, then perhaps the it, do you know if there's a a mayor here in town or a lord of sorts? Barbin Vester, good luck getting any pence out of him. He's kept railing on the line for far too long. You want to talk about someone who's anti-union, who's anti-mom and pop? Man wouldn't share a tomato from his own garden if his life depended on it. Right, well, why, why would he? He worked for that tomato. Well, I mean, if his life I mean, depended on it. There would right, be like, not I mean. Anyways, let's just drop this stuff off first. Okay. All right. So Propaganda. You... <laughs> you make your way slightly down the road a little bit to Barthen's provisions. You can just kind of tell from sizing up everything here that this is the largest kind of trading post present here in Phandalin. And you can make your way <coughs> to into Barthen's there, and you can go ahead. And once you kind of make your way inside the shop, you'll see that basically... Anything that you can see on the kind of adventuring gear table that we're all familiar with from the player's handbook, it's everything there is present. So if there's anything on that list that you're looking to pick up or add to your supplies, this would be kind of the place that you could get it. We'll say that there's a sign out front that tells you that it's open from sunup to sundown. So, you know, throughout the majority of the day. <laughs> um uh, and, Theodore, quick yes. housekeeping question. As far as money goes, are we just breaking everything down into gold? Unless you want to keep it for some reason. Okay. Specifically. Great. I am just going to convert that quickly, but I am listening. So. I'll help you. Okay. That being said, apparently, which I do not recall this from the original Fandelver, but the proprietor of Barthen's provisions is a woman, which I could have sworn the original one, it was a guy, but maybe that's they, something they changed. So either way, you'll see a young human woman behind the counter, and there are also two other human clerks, male clerks that are kind of just cleaning up, attending to things. 
in the shop as you make your way inside. <clears throat> and uh, she'll turn to see the four of all of you going inside, people staying outside. And she'll say, well, hello. Welcome to Barthen's Provision. I'm Elmina. What can I, what can I do you for? Well, my dear, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Bishop Frizian, and I, me and my companions here are here to, to deliver, well, here to deliver some supplies, but also some bad news, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, so have you heard from Gundren Rockseeker, perhaps? Well, I haven't heard from him recently, but I, I say I'd consider him a good friend. Okay. Well, unfortunately, he was waylaid along oh. the way. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, his good man, Sildar Hallwinter. Oh, I've heard of him. Yes. Unfortunately, he has passed. We were able oh. to... Oh, no. Oh, yes. We were able to recover the body. But uh, sadly, we have no sign of Gundren. Do you know if his brothers perhaps are in town? Uh, I know they're, they're both of them are camped somewhere outside of town. I'm not exactly sure where. They were really excited at this, <clears throat> this mine that they've apparently found, and they headed outside, and, and I'm not sure exactly where or how far outside of town they're camped, but uh, I'm sure obviously they're going to want to know what happened to their brother as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It is a true shame, and we will do our best to let them know as quickly as possible. Do you have a recommendation, perhaps, for an inn around here in town? How are things in general? Things are, are I would say, they're, there's a group of, I guess you could call them, I don't know, ruffians that are kind of, they're less than ideal. Um kind of they're shaking down local businesses so anyway that to that point the sleeping giant tap house i would probably not look for a room there because that's pretty much where they kind of are holed up so the stone hill inn which is just kind of right in this town center you just follow the road you came in on that's probably your best bet for you know just to, to find rooms fantastic well thank you very much <laughs> Very well. I do have some goblin accoutrement, some <laughs> short bows and scimitars and shields. Is that something you might be interested in purchasing? She says that's probably going to be a lion shield coster. If you keep going through the sound, the town center and further down, that's more their fare for armor and weapons and things of that nature. Hmm. But anything else that might, I mean, I'd gladly see whatever you had. And you said you had supplies, <laughs> right? Was this the... I'm guessing these are the ones that Gundren had kind of given me a heads up about. Absolutely, yes. Well, I'll invite her out to the cart, and then, but I'll warn you that unfortunately, Sildar's body is in the back. So, if you are faint of heart, we can we can just unload them and bring them in. All right. Well, she says, you know what? And she kind of like whistles and has the two other clerks like, why don't you guys just go take those, bring them around back, and in the meantime, and she kind of goes behind the counter and pulls out. 40 gold pieces and says as promised and she'll give each of you the 10 gold pieces that you were promised for making this delivery yeah i love getting paid do you have any like cool rocks cool rocks you say mm -hmm. well we literally have a miners exchange further down in town <gasps> so really? that may be your best bet for cool rocks she gets really excited. Yeah, so the Fandolin Minor Exchange further down in the town, that may be Halia over there. You may want to talk to her. She runs that, so that might be your best bet. All right. And speaking of the dead... Yes. Do you have a, I don't know, a healer, a revivifier? We do a have shaman. a... shaman. A voodoo man, even. <laughs> there is a shrine. We have the Shrine of Luck to Lady Timoros, just kind of in the town mm -hmm. center. And we do have a priest who kind of stays in the house right nearby. So if she's not in the house or at, or she's probably at the shrine. I'm not sure. I, thankfully, you know, and she kind of like, I was going to say, well, we have Jesus, Lathander, Christ, the so sign of the cross, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Blessed be. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've never had to use or look into such services. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure 
if that's within her purview to if she's that strong enough to to do that but it's definitely worth a try she's more than willing to to assist anybody so i would start stop there and see if she could maybe help you out that's sister gario she's right just down the road a little bit right in the town center so all right i mean worst case scenario we've got what 10 years before we can't revivify somebody anymore and she like is like i life is this is my this is my realm and she just kind of gestures at the shop things make sense here hmm um, no, definitely. He feels a little weird, and he's gonna grab whatever knickknacks at the counter. <laughs> yeah, like, I'll right. I'll, I'll buy one of these then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a quicks, if you will. Yeah, Fandolin's favorite chocolate bar. Yeah, yep. That's yep. One hundred percent. What it is. Now, how is quicks spelt? Do you think? Is Not it- how you think. It's Q. Uh huh. U U. Uh huh. I X. My ex, mm. Quicks, Quicks Bar, Fandolin's mm. favorite chocolate. Yes. Uh, Hungry? Grab a giggles. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, um, it's a strong ad campaign. <laughs> mm. Oh, boy, we were really just making this world our own. I love that. Uh, yeah, that's the beauty of D&D, baby. Yeah, right? <laughs> what percentage of milk chocolate is that Quicks you have there? Jeez. Percentage what, of this, milk chocolate? This quick? The quicks that <laughs> would an ad. Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. Actually, usually we just have some of the country's finest chefs come and make us chocolate at home. So this is very good. They sometimes put marshmallows in it. It's true. Senneth would be a person who has like family has a chocolatier, and she says, "I oh, can't tell only you once a week. I can't." <laughs> I can't tell you the percentage off the top of my head, but I can tell you that it is the first ingredient on the list of ingredients. So, right, and there's only three of them on here. <laughs> right, exactly. Wow. So, back in Leyland, we only eat twenty five percent milk chocolate. It's a <coughs> Leyland thing. Mm. Thirty five percent sawdust. And she like she like takes one and like opens it and like cuts twenty five percent of it, and she's like. It's, does this work? Yeah. Uh, that's 25% nice. of it? Yeah, so puts, puts her hand on Bronson. Yeah. You have to buy Anyways. that. You're no, here. you don't have to buy it. No. We're going to go. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, uh, I'm here. Uh, again, If uh, feel free to swing by if you need anything. Um, you know, obviously, I've got all these supplies here and plenty of Quix bars. If you're interested, say, it's nothing but Quix bars. <laughs> like Quix bars, bed rolls, rope, you know, whatever you need. Um, right. So, uh, yeah. Um, like I said, if there's anything else, if you find anything else out about Gundren, I, I would love to, uh, you know, anything at all. I'd, I'd love to yeah. hear about it. So please let me know. Do you know, is, is Sildar from here? Well, he he frequents here. He's a, he's a f- okay. he's friends with several people here, but he's as a member of the Lord's Alliance, he kind of moves around. Mm-hmm. So like he doesn't have a residence here. Right. So who would you say he would be if perhaps we were going to let somebody know? Uh, yeah, I believe I, I be- well, I don't know about next of kin, but a- I- Closest acquaintance, then. Well, I mean, Harbin Roommate, is a, even Harbin may be your best bet, just because I believe Harbin's also part of the Lord's Alliance. But mm. perfect. But I'll be, I'll, I'll be honest. I, you know, those ruffians, they've kind of, they've been kind of like, I don't know, f- kind of flaunting that they have the town master's authority. So, oh. I'm not really too hot on Harbin right now. So. Plus, you're he's, saying there's a bigger prick in this town than Harbin Vester. Well, okay, so he is the town master, so I'm not trying to start any trouble or spread any rumors, but I think that, and I don't know this, but what they're saying is it seems like he's kind of employing them, or or in oh. some way. Mm. I'm not sure. I don't dive into it. I run my shop. That's what I do. But 
these guys are kind of jerks and they kind of be like, yeah, well, Harbin said we could do this. Blah. I don't know. Any particular mm. incident you're not very fond of? Like I said, I, I mean, I run a shop. I'm pretty much out of this. It doesn't, there may be other people that have more. Information? Yeah, or have had worse experiences than I am. They, I'm pretty far towards the far side of town too, so I'm a little f more removed from everything as far as things go. So I'm okay, but you ever hear of a messing with anybody's inventory? Not to my knowledge, no. But that doesn't mean that it's not possible. I mean, there's certain people like I don't know. I don't think. For example, I don't think Halia would really stand for that. She doesn't seem like the type to take guff from anybody. So I don't know mm -hmm. about the miners' exchange, but I don't know. Maybe there's there's other smaller businesses around that maybe they're able to hit them up a little bit more. Hmm. All right. Well, we will keep a weather eye open. I'd like to purchase this lock as well. And sure. I, I do that. Is there anything else, guys, or should we head on down the lane, perhaps to? The shrine, or Harbin's, <clears throat> or perhaps the uh, the rock sanctuary. The seventh is like three quick spars in because he's never had processed sugar. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! No, you're really amazing, honestly. Like, we should get my chef to make these. <laughs> yeah. Let's just move on. All right. So yeah, you guys are more than able to leave, and as you guys are kind of making your way down. The road, I'll say anybody that's e like, maybe I'm going to say Bronson, probably definitely just given your history in the region, but anybody that might be proficient with history, go ahead and make me a history check. Yeah, I didn't think so. That's so. seven. Cool. All right. Never mind. We're just moving on. Oof. So where are we heading next? What's our plan? Did we did we leave the body? <laughs> I'm going to no, say... Think, we have the cart. So. We have yeah. the cart with the body. We kept so. it yeah. in the back. They they just moved the provisions They took the supplies yeah. and, okay, and, good, and good, put good. them in the back kind of in the uh, storage Since we got to go think... through the middle of town, probably the shrine. We should probably mm -hmm. lay some ceremony rites on the body over at the shrine before right. we do anything else. Yeah, there's... Crows are starting to gather around this. Mm -hmm. All right, so you oh, guys sorry, will... Sorry, that was me. <laughs> make your way kind of down the main sort of path of Phandalin towards the Shrine of Luck, which is, as you kind of look around and get a more kind of closer look at some of these towns, this, or the houses and things, you don't see, like, a temple, right? There is no, like, formal temple. Like, this is the temple, and it is a rock shrine. Like, it, it is not like a, it's not a physical building, it is a bunch of stones kind of arranged in like an arch. Hmm. Um, so we'll say that as you guys make your way there, you'll see that kind of attending and just sort of, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll make her praying because why not, right? We'll, we'll tap into the cleric stereotype here. Is a young uh, blonde-haired elven woman who is kind of attending to the shrine and currently praying. You see that she is, uh, you'll see she's got a kind of golden coin on a chain around her neck, which again, the religious types will all know is the sim holy symbol of Timora, Lady of Luck. And, you know, the kind of hearing the footsteps of the oxen and the real the creaking, creaking of the wheels as you guys approach, she'll kind of get up and turn to look to all of you and say, oh, well, you look to be new in town, so welcome. I'm Sister Gariel. How can I help you? Hi, and Sister Gariel. I'm Bronson Borley. We have a unfortunate death we encountered on the road here and need to perform some funeral rites. I apologize. Normally, I'm near in town for the blessing of the fields, but uh, in, in this case, we, we bring bad news. Well, and then she kind of like her eyes pan over to the back of the cart where the scorched body is resting. She says, oh, oh, my. How did this happen? Well, <laughs> goblins. Yep. And then, unfortunately, there was uh, some magic which occurred. And then that was that was really a 
a, a terrible fire inside of the goblin cave mm-hmm. and completely uncontrollable by any of us. I think it's fair to say. And well, sadly, we were unable to rescue our good man, Sildar Hallwinter here. Really tiptoeing around that one. <laughs> <laughs> All honest. Uh, no lie was told, honestly. And she says, well, that's... Well, I'm sorry you had to deal with that. So what are your... So am I to understand that if possible, you'd like to uh, return him to life if possible? Is that what I'm gathering from this? Absolutely. I mean, you know, this isn't something I've got much expertise in, but I did hear it was rather expensive. But he is a member of the Lord's Alliance, so that might be something they would be willing to foot the bill for, as it were. Right, he'll pay it. All right, well, it's not outside of the realm of things that I'm capable of doing. However, I, as you've mentioned, it is a costly process to do this, as it's been uh, clearly at least several hours since this occurred. So if we were able to, and perhaps I can and send a missive away to somewhere, talk to someone to the Lord's Alliance to acquire the materials components to perform this revivification, we could, I could definitely do that, but I don't have the required materials here. So it might take maybe a day or two to get those here. It's not a small sum of gold, and unfortunately, it has to be uh, in the form of diamonds. So, oh, that might be something we'll it'll take some time to get that here. But if he's as connected with the Lord's Alliance as we seem to think he might be, that probably won't be a problem for him. Now, just asking for a friend, the friend being myself, <laughs> what, what, uh, what kind of diamond? What mm, you just need to be well. I don't really want... I, we could get into the argument of semantics of worth or things, but I believe we're talking about... The 300 gold? Uh, no, it's more than that. It's The 500, 500. one. Is it the 500 one? It's it the 500, because it's been more than a minute. So oh, that's right. It is a singular diamond worth 500 gold. Now, again, we could argue... Like Yes, more. Yeah, or less. that's that's a lot of gold. Well, again, like I said, <clears throat> one could make the argument that if I you charge me five hundred gold pieces for a smaller diamond, it's in fact worth five hundred gold pieces. But we're not going to get into that. We'll leave that to the. We'll gods. leave that to the Lord's Alliance to figure that out. <clears throat> Is this basalt? Oh, are you a are you a large fan of geology? Yes. Well, these you know, I'll be honest, I. Most of my time spent more training in, you know, the clergy, less about Mm -hmm. rock studies. But Mm -hmm. these are gathered from a variety of different ruins nearby, so Mm -hmm. it's entirely possible. There are many different outcroppings of different rocks in the hills, as well as older buildings, some in various degrees of disrepair. So it's entirely possible that one of these is basalt. I think a couple of them are. She goes over to them and like takes out one of her stones and mm-hmm. scratches it, and then she like licks it. Mm-hmm. Sure. This one for sure. Perhaps just salt rock. No, salt rock wouldn't really hold up very well in this sort of formation. You know, it's kind uh-huh. of they break. They are, you know, they're pretty sturdy, but on the hardness scale, they're more on the softer side. Ah, yes, the hardness scale. We're all very familiar. Yeah, mm-hmm. classic. Mo's hardness scale. Very common. Yes. Mo is a famous wizard. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mostopheles. Yeah. <laughs> Mostopheles. Mostopheles. His Mo is the shortened version. Most okay, mm-hmm. right yeah, Ted, yeah, Ted, write that down. Write that down. Yep, yep. <laughs> Mostopheles. I have a miscellaneous section in my notes for all of these things. The the geology wizard. Listen, if anybody's the person to play a game where there's a geology wizard involved, this would be this guy. Mm-hmm. Literally have a degree in this, so we're good. So, why don't I get everybody to make me a perception check while we're here? Mm-hmm. Twelve. One. And twelve. Okay. So, <clears throat> it's not 
Oh, uh, so this will be for Seneth. It's not overly flaunted, and her robes are kind of blues and silvers. It's just typical for a Timorian cleric. And you'll notice that kind of in one of like the folds of the robe is, again, kind of blending in with that blue and silver, there is a silver pin with blue stones in it, and that pin is in the shape of a harp. So she will say to all of you, so yeah, I'll take care of trying to send away something to the Lord's Alliance and see if we can't acquire the means to perform the spell to bring Sildar back. And she'll say, well, in the meantime, and she'll walk over and you'll see she'll hold her holy symbol and she'll kind of mutter a few words and, you know, her hand will kind of go over top of the body and you'll see kind of like silver sort of like dust come out of her hands and sort of cover the body and... She says, well, at least now we won't have to worry about the body decomposing any further. So this will protect it and also, (laughs) you know, prevent any sort of undeadification of the body as well while we wait to receive the material components needed to perform this resurrection. Is is that a problem around here, undeadification? You're adventurers and you said a random fire killed this man. I'm not going to put anything out of... It wasn't a random fire, but it was. was it, mean, it felt. It felt. Well, I mean, it was. Random. It was rather random. You're right. It, it did kind of just come out of nowhere. I couldn't have expected it. That's for sure. <laughs> to I to me, that is random. Yeah. Yeah. Ildar now has the blessing of both Shante and Timor. So if you stack those yeah. seven days, it could be a total of fourteen now that we have. Yeah. And, and honestly, well. if we just coat them in salt. We could even preserve them longer. Pack them in there. Yeah. I think that might be how magic works. Can we leave the body here with you, sister? That'll be fine. Yeah, I'll I'll keep it safe. Ted, what does the holy symbol that she clutches onto look like? It is a smiling woman. It's a gold coin that's just like a smiling female character i i'll find a picture of it and send it no that's it. fine i'm just i just it's vastly different than the pin very much so okay that's that's what i wanted to to clock really quickly yeah so okay. she'll say so i, I and she says for, for, forgive me perhaps this is obviously we just met and we're in the process of dealing with you potentially grieving and, and trying to bring someone back to life but are, what are your plans in town now that you're here? Are you looking for, are you planning to stay? Are you looking for work? What are your, what what are you looking to do here? Hmm. Well, we do have two horses. Well, we'll probably have to stable them for the night. I don't know if anybody wants them. I'd be down to sell them personally. And, you know, I, I don't know Gundren myself, but Gundren Rockseeker, that is. But he is missing, and I am interested in finding him. So we were thinking about heading on down to Hallia's at the the rock cellar, you sure. know. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then perhaps to the inn to grab some rooms and a stable. for. Well, well first, we'd be going to... The miners exchange because Soot wants to go there, and yeah, yeah. then we'll go to Halia's house. Is the miners exchange or there? Look close by. She yes, she she has a home nearby, but she runs the miners exchange. Got it. Ah, got it. So we were both on the same. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, she yeah. Says, well, so I, again, I'll throw this out there. I don't know. I don't mean to impose, <clears throat> but if you're looking for adventuring work. I, uh, shall I say this? Okay. There is a preacher not too far from here who has a book that I would like to acquire. Mm. And I attempted this once before and it didn't go well for me, but it was Mm. just me. So I was wondering if perhaps an intrepid group of adventurers would like to try their hand at it instead. And maybe I will gladly reward you if you are able to acquire this book for me. Well, personally, I would 
feel like I need more information before. Sure, the creature is a yeah. banshee. Oh, her oh. name is Agatha. Okay. That probably rings a little true to you, Bronson, just given your general knowledge of the region. And she says, I wasn't able to test this theory myself because I did have to flee them there with my life. And I also feel like if I were to go back, well, her and I didn't get along very well, so I don't think she'd be willing to have a conversation with me. However... I, before I ran for my life, she did talk to me, or talk is a, is a strong word, about the various mm. beautiful baubles that she owned in life. So I believe that if one were to present her with a suitable gift of some kind, perhaps they'd be able to persuade her to either give me this or to get this book or at least the location of this okay well it's a spell book all right okay. uh, just, well, they just, say it as if we pride the information out of them <laughs> right. just sometimes silence is the best interrogation <laughs> technique um, it's true so it it's supposed to belong to a more legendary mage so mage um, yes what does a cleric want with a mage book that's not our business. That's a fair point. It's also a fair question, though, because I mean, it just seems a little out of right. Like I understand, out like I don't need. Yeah, right. That'd be like me being like the legendary barbarian axe that I want. Like right. More important, why are we negotiating with a benchy? Well, it if she doesn't have the book in her lair, she's old. Obviously, being an undead creature. If she ha if it's not present in her lair, she knows where it is. Right. And with her dispatched and gone, the knowledge dies with her. Mm. I'll be listen, cleric to cleric, I'll be honest with you. If you want if you can get the information and then you feel the need to dispatch her, I have no quarrel with that. But I do need the information of the location of this book. Or the book itself. Mm. Very well. Do you know the name of this spell, Casta? <laughs> I love oh Mostopheles. Oh. oh can I like is is Mostof can I make like a history check yeah, about yeah, Mostopheles? Yeah. You sure See, can. I think he used to be a good guy or a bad guy. <coughs> yeah, uh, you definitely can. Well, can I, I was gonna oh. say, can I can I offer the help action since we're both in yeah, this of course conversation? You can. Go ahead, take another roll, Jake. Twelve. God Twelve. Damn it. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, he's not like he's not as like he doesn't have that you know of anyway, like spells named after him, like some of the more famous wizards, right? He's not a mm. Morden Canaan, he's not a Tasha a Tensor, right? Yeah, but no he is arrow. right. So, but he is a more well known mage. So he wasn't known to be like, yeah, you know, almost Ophelia's the scourge of the Sword Coast. Like that's not <laughs> as mo like seemingly again given the 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 kind of history behind him calling him a legendary mage is in an like that's not a gross overstatement of his skills i know he didn't seem like he was a necromancer or something like that uh, not like a weird creepy cursed book then all right uh, correct and she will say she'll actually produce like a jeweled silver comb and she says she seems quite vain so perhaps appealing to her beauty and provide and she'll hand this she sees she'll hand that to you so because she sees your grabby hands would be able to gather that information for you she says in the meantime i will work on getting the lord's alliance a missive i know some people that may be able to get in touch with them to get that diamond here and she says, I can also offer you, and she'll pull out, like, you know, upon completion of the quest, four potions of healing. So, and then, you know, we'll see how things go. Perhaps, you know, and if I'm able to, while you're in the process of doing whatever it is you're doing, 
well, hopefully we can get Sildar back and he'll be able to provide more information. But otherwise, you know, and she'll point like over at the house nearby, like that's my house. That's where I live. And if I'm not there, I'm usually here. So if you're looking for me. I'm around. All right. Do, do we have like where this, do you know where this Banshee resides? Perhaps Shh. could you point it out on my map here? Right. What's the address? Yes, <laughs> she does know where this banshee lives. There was One an old Hubble kind. Street. <laughs> there was an old kind of smaller town that's been abandoned for years and now kind of lies in ruin. It is the Tribor Trail actually kind of runs through the main wreckage of this town. It was an old town called Coneyberry. Was the name of the town, and her lair isn't too far off of you know it's a, way, a little bit off so it's not like travelers are routinely encountering her but she was able to mark out on the map for you where coneyberry is and where agatha's lair is set to be is that within a like reasonable distance to us a couple hours a couple minutes couple yeah days? yes it is not too far oh, you could get there with you could probably get there and back presuming no Random encounters on the road. Uh, I swear to God, Ted. Listen, I've got... <laughs> oh, I have to go get my other book. My notebook from back in the day with a hundred different random encounters for the Sword Coast. We'll have to pull that guy out. Mm -hmm. Although Jake knows too many of them, so I might not have to be able to do that. There we uh, go. Um, but yes. Or, did, or Ted to turn Jake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, that's true. He has been helping you out a little bit. But uh, yeah, it, it, you could probably get there and back pretty well, you know, if you left first thing in the morning, get back by the afternoon. Oh, so, okay. That's not terrible. Yeah, you can so four a.m. and come back. I yeah. was going to say, so this is definitely a tomorrow west. You, I mean, you tell me. Well, what time? I mean, what time is it now? Let's make it three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. Surely a tomorrow quest. I don't wish to fight a banshee in the evening. Right. And then the travel back at night. And... Sure, sure, reasonable. Bandits. All, all bandits. reasonable points. Bandits, right? Or goblin bandits. Sure. So. But thank you, sister. Of course. And she will, she'll kind of say, and she'll kind of clutch that holy symbol and kind of gesture to all of you. And she will be, you know, may Lady Luck smile on all of you. And she will give you a blessing of time or giving you advantage on the next d20 based roll that you make all right nice nice i'll yeah. i'll take a silver and drop it in the alms box and sure i i'm gonna hand a stone to her that is brown and gold and say this is a cat's eye they're supposed to be lucky so oh and she says well, thank you so much she's she seems genuinely touched by your gift Dante's blessing to you and the rest of Vandalin. And she will kind of nod her head in respect to Shantea. And where would you all like to go now? So you've dropped off just the body or leaving the cart there? Or what's your plan? I think we can leave the cart. Yeah. Like we don't have the provisions anymore, right? Correct. And she has room that she could store it if need be. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have any problem doing that. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think so. Does she well, have... if we're selling the horses, no reason to have a cart, eh? Well, the oxen still belong to the rock seekers, but uh, <laughs> these two, mm -hmm. well, I guess, too, uh, technically, that might be their horses as well. Mm -hmm. We'll just put them in the stable and, and go from there. All right. Then to uh, the exchange, then. Yeah. All right. So you guys make your way well, on, on our way to the exchange i know it's a small travel distance that we're going but i do want to bring up well out of earshot of, of the sister the difference in the symbols that i noticed to everybody sure i you know i'm i'm, I'm not a religious man myself but a holy symbol didn't match a little pin that she had on the inside could be totally unrelated but i don't know and then the whole book thing I don't, um, it's not it's not sitting well with me. What the symbol look like? Well, she's got the coin one, right? With the with the with the woman going right, and then she's got a little one that's it's like a harp and it's blue. Maybe sapphire? But what's the other one? 
turquoise. Sure, sure. Perhaps she's had her heart stolen by a bard. I'm a music, right? Go ahead and make a religion or history, depending on, you know, anybody here can go ahead hmm. and do that. I only have a plus two. Ah. 12 on my religion check. An 18 on mine. There it is. Oh, and you can also use an advantage if you wanted to on this D20 check. Oh, right. well. yeah. yeah, you know what? I'll let it be for one you want. You just got to tell me before you roll. I'm there you go. It. Thank you very That's much. That's very time war in nature. With an 18, Bishop, I'll tell you that the, the symbol that Seneth described to you does not track to any religious deity that you know of in the Forgotten Realms. Hmm. I've got my little checklist here of gods and their symbols, and uh, let's see, no. No, nothing. Hmm. Well, that one, no. That, that, one's, a, that one's a pie. Yeah, and then this one, you can see, is a, is a lute, but still right. different. Right, different, different, different instrument. Different. Yeah. So now, you said it's like a harp? Yeah. It, it was like a harp in a in a circle, right, we said? Yeah, like a, like yeah. a sort of like a, <clears throat> like a, like a semi-circle with a harp kind of through yeah. yeah being a bard like myself it's not hard to, to put two and two together <laughs> obviously a lover of ale if you've ever been anywhere oh <laughs> the tribor oh. trail yeah i uh, thought it was a guild but that's probably right oh it's, you you would think but no no actually <laughs> several ales and stouts actually eh, i wouldn't think much of it i trust you i mean it's a nice little piece who doesn't love to have a little yeah, Flash. no, like, right. Who doesn't like just we had I mean, a humble person, a book. It's it, it probably it have actually evil. went and blessed the whole brewery, actually. I'm just trying to think if anybody in this group would have any reason to know because everybody's very say, secluded and I'm like guessing what it is, but uh, you could, oh, I mean, if you we all know, we all know, what yeah, it is. I'm, <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to like make reasonable like would anybody here actually know but if, like everybody's very localized mm -hmm. to their region you yeah. know what i mean it's okay I, not I, to know yeah. yeah i have a feeling that bronson could know but it's a lot cooler if bronson doesn't know like yeah. that he's that small town like he mm -hmm. it, like 100 percent. like he would be try to act like he would know them but like he's not even smart enough to be in on the secret <laughs> all right i like i like where this is going all right so we're gonna head now towards the Fandolin miners exchange i recall mm. yeah. all right so it is kind of one of the furthest or the furthest south sort of shop if you will that kind of and then there's a trail that kind of leads out of town if you continue on we're so, looking for a friend in the diamond business. All right. Well, so as you approach and you kind of say this to, you'll see that there is, boy, what a description. I don't know how you portray ruthless in a, in a description, but that's what I've given. Also, surprisingly, one of the few people that does not have art, which is kind of, I feel like that's somebody I would love to have art for. But anyway... There is, yeah, a woman there who you've already heard's name is Halia. As you kind of look around the Miner's Exchange, it is probably exactly what you'd expect a, a, a mining exchange to be. You see lots of scales, there are pickaxes, there are sieves, there are different kinds of picks and brushes and things for kind of breaking out and, and kind of cleaning different rock specimens you'll see again a variety of different things on different scales with different weight systems there's no such thing as a rock tumbler at this point so we'll say there's lots of different polishing equipment and things here so yeah she will see you approach and say the diamond diamond business yeah we're looking for a friend in the diamond business and we thought you might be of use over here well, unless you know something I don't, there ain't a whole lot of diamonds in these here hills. That's disappointing. That's what are the these marketing things? I've been told my whole life. Uh, I mean, she says, well, you know, there was talks of a gold rush years and years and years ago, but I don't know if there's any truth to that. 
There are a bunch of streams and valleys nearby, so people take they'll take out sieving equipment and try their best to see if they can't find things, you know, of interest nearby, any kind of small amounts of gold. Plus it's a honestly, if things are kind of slow business wise, that's a great way to make a quick buck is to just here take these for the day and, and go maybe you'll find something and you'll notice that she's got like buckets of dirt around with like dollar like a gold piece amounts to them and she's like or you could take one of these and dig through it one of these kind of random buckets full of dirt and who knows what you'll find Ooh. maybe you'll find a diamond i'm going to lean over into Senna's ear Daddy always told me not to get involved with loot buckets. Seneth already has like three gold in his hand. <laughs> she, said, she sees this and her eyes kind of glint and she goes, oh, hold on. And she goes behind the counter and pulls out one and it's just like, it's a different bucket, but the bucket is painted gold. And she puts it out and that one's got a five gold piece. And she says, you look like somebody who knows the value of a gold coin and puts out the gold bucket loot bucket as it were god <laughs> shit. Shit, look the amount of gold that you hold in your hands is going to be more than what you find in the bucket i don't care what the color of the bucket is <laughs> no, it, 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 them, my, my, listen my father always said nothing ventured nothing gained right that's how he made his first the thousand gold he took a ten thousand gold loan from his father and then he used that <laughs> Hey, Senneth, did perhaps your father also say there's a sucker born every minute? That is, did you know my father? <laughs> no, but I do know the type, and I'll tell mm. you, you're becoming that type versus your father's type if you're buying these here buckets. It's a nice bucket. I'll grant you that. I have right. a bucket. I'll fill it up with some dirt later, and you can pay me uh, a gold for that. Put a gold in your hand, I'm like, All right. Appreciate All right, that. good, great. I'll take that. I'm putting it in my inventory. See, and I, and I whisper over to Bronson, see, look, I just got myself, right, a discount on a bucket of dirt from five With gold to one gold. My wisdom save of eight, I, you know what, I, I, I tell you, there's a fool born every minute, and we've got one near us. Talia? Yes. What kind of stones or gems are in the lands around us? Well, I mean, it, it really depends on how much you want to dig and how much time you want to spend out there. I have seen, and she'll kind of pull out, like, from behind the counter, there's, like, a box that she'll set up on the counter and kind of, like, click open the things and open it, and you'll see a variety of different stones that are kind of... Some of them you can see if the time has been taken to kind of polish them into more of like a rounded stone, but you'll see things like a variety of different kinds of quartzes, things like amethyst and smoky quartz and rose quartz mm -hmm. and things of that nature. You'll also see a couple of different, how rich do we want to make Fandolin? We'll go with a couple of different kinds of tourmaline. You'll got things that are pinks and greens and different varieties here. We'll throw in some watermelon tourmaline here where you've got the pink kind of embedded with the green. Is there anything in there to be a use to us? What I mean, do you mean, it's all of use to we'll us. We'll say there's some tanzanite there, right? So you've got some nice bluish purple stones. Oh, so I think he means perhaps in the realm of a diamond worth 500 gold. No, no. And she says, and she says, well, forgive me. I didn't realize I was dealing with such high rollers. And no, not. no, we've we've got a dead. We there's a dead man, and we've. And she thing. goes, "Well, go, a dead man." You say, "Please." And, and what happened? Did you dispatch of this fire. man? There was there was a fire. No. It was oh. an uncontrolled we fire. There. I see. He was originally kidnapped by goblins. We attempted right. to rescue him, and unfortunately, the goblin cave. You know, goblins and their sure. lax OSHA yeah. regulations. It caught on fire, the whole cave, and everyone in it died. This is why, I, right, th th that's what you get for being non-union. The goblins should have unionized for safety. Conditions. Without a doubt. I've heard the kobolds have. How have they now? <laughs> Been working in tandem, sneaking into cinemas all across Vandalin. <laughs> Dragonborn's furious. <laughs> yeah, come back, kobolds. <laughs> she'll, she'll pull out, she, she'll pull out, like, a much smaller, like, metal locked box that she'll open and you'll see inside here there are things like rubies 
sapphires. There is emerald, diamonds. She says these are. Uh, um, stuff. This is obviously things that will be can be broken down into various spell components. Mm-hmm. Are useful for a lot of that stuff. And she said, "I'd be lying if I said some of these didn't come out of the streams and creeks and things nearby." But this is not an everyday kind of situation. You could probably, if you're willing to take the time and put in the effort to go searching for these for stones in the you know in the mountains and in the things nearby, you could easily probably find gems that'll net you in the realm of 30, 40, 50 gold pieces, things like that. Mm-hmm. But you have to be willing to put in the time. And a lot of the people that kind of come in and out of town are not people that are planning to just do this for a living they kind of want like what they think is going to be a quick thrill which is why i'll be honest these buckets are here now you don't i don't know what value you'll find who knows Mm -hmm. what could be inside these buckets i don't even know can i insight that Uh, yeah go ahead i'm gonna go ahead and roll a contested check Mm, here don't bother that's a natural one (laughs) she couldn't possibly how could you it's not see-through Right. Mm, I mean, we we bring in large amounts and we add. Listen, there's a process to this. Okay. All right. Hang on. (laughs) Now you have to roll. All right. Yeah. So she says, listen, uh, we we have a little process we do here. And she says, look, Mm -hmm. and she'll go and she'll go over there. Here's one I haven't put together yet. I'll show you this one. uh, What I've got. And she'll kind of put out. uh, Here's the kind of bin. The bucket goes on the counter. And she goes, first, we start off with this, and she gets just, like, some random kind of fill dirt, and she says, we put this in. And then she goes, listen, I like this. This gets all the, definitely hooks all the kids. And Mm -hmm. she has what she calls confetti sand. And it is sand, like, light, kind of almost like play sand with tiny little bits of different chipped colored rocks. So it kind of looks like a bunch. And it is small little bits of stone. And she says, and then I put them in, and then she pulls out a box, with, and then she opens that box, and you'll see it's got a variety of different gemstones, some rounded, some cracked and more, you know, craggy. And then she goes, and she pulls out a blindfold, and she blindfolds herself, and kind of is just reaching and putting in rocks and dirt into the bucket. And then she said, and then she kind of tops, grabs some more of the confetti sand and fills the whole thing up. And takes it off and goes, there you go. That's how I fill these buckets. So I don't know what I put in there. You guys mm-hmm. know. You got to see me do the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You should call it Funfetti Sand. Well, that's pretty good. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Do you know the Rock Seekers? I know of them. I don't know them personally, though. All right. Is this very your well. cat? Uh, yeah, actually. He's very friendly. Yeah, his name's Simon. Simon. Ah, oh, silly name for a cat. The sleepy uh, boy. He often is. So, aside from trying to get a, a diamond, what else brings you to Fandolin? Aside from obviously wanting to pick up some loot buckets before you leave. Hmm. Ah. No, I'm almost convinced now myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were. I don't. I don't think we can say. Can we say? It's not really our our business. We're just helping with a business. Right. I mean, we never signed any NDAs. Well, see, we were coming along town sure. to Fandolin. Right. And we found the body of a fellow. Right. And we believe that there was a second fellow, one Gundren Rockseeker, who <laughs> perhaps escaped from the fiery demise, which met the first fellow, and we heard his brothers were in town, and so we came to find them, let them know, and perhaps find the man himself. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, and that's, and now you're just, that's what your plan is. You're just going to hang out, see what you can find out here in town. You guys going to be here for a while. What's your thoughts? If I could spend the rest of my life in the mine, I'd be happy. If okay. I could get a nice drink at the Stonehill Inn, I'd be happy. All right. Yeah. If I, I get my father to back me. time. <laughs> I just think it's a catchy <laughs> tune. I, I'm really about <laughs> so I, I promise that? you. All right. Well, I mean, my tools are also here at your disposal for rental purposes if you'd like to rent them. There's obviously plenty of different stones for purchase. That's like renting a do- tuxedo. Who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> do you do uh, trades? 
Sure. Okay. Do you she have... pulls out a bag and like Laura Bailey. Yeah, just table. on the table. All right. <laughs> My two she... minutes cold. All right. Okay, I, I guess. Have... Sure. I well, while she's looking through times. that, what about the rest of you? What are your thoughts? Well. Anything else I can help you with? I mean, I've got a. I probably have a diamond here that's worth 500 gold. Right, sure. Now, would you be willing to do, I don't know, work for diamond? We, you, Do you have a mission? Is there a scraggly group of uh, mine demons that you need to clear out or something of the sort? I don't know how mines work. All right, well, since you brought it up, my, not mine demons, how about just... Uh, let me ask you this. You tell me that you, you're worth a guy, goblins, you killed a bunch of guys. What is your capability of capturing? You think you could capture somebody alive? What do you think about that? I yeah. slow turn to... I just side-eye Bronson. <laughs> that all depends on what that guy is. Here's what I'll tell you. All right? I I have some friends. We're looking to do some work around this region. And there's these group of people. You might have heard of them. They call themselves the Red Brands. They're kind of jerks. They're here in the town. Hmm. They hang around that sleeping giant tap house. Up on the hill in the east, there's an old kind of busted down manor house called Trezendar Manor. They have a base underneath that manor i will give you guys they have a leader that kind of runs their whole show i don't know his actual name i don't know much about him i know he goes by the name glass staff Ooh, cool you capture him and bring me anything you find from his the correspondence any kind of thing you find in his quarters you bring him to me i'll give you 150 gold pieces 150 gold wanted alive. Right. And the leader of the Red Band <laughs> Ruffians. Correct. Glassstaff. Yeah, I don't know. Could be an elf. Could be a dwarf. I don't know who he is. That's just what they call him. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. or, or her. Or, or, or her. Could mm. be... Uh, I mean, it could... Maybe it it's could not be... even... A, maybe it's not even a person. Maybe it's like right. an item. Maybe it is a staff mm. made out of glass. I don't know. And just to clarify, because <laughs> semantics, gray area, just his correspondence or their correspondence is what you want. I mean, that would be ideal. Any kind of anything you have, who they're talking, who he's talking to, any of that kind Ledgers, of stuff. papers, documents. Sure, any kind of, yeah, right. that sounds but, great. Okay. And the man himself, if possible. Well, right. Ideally, woman. yes. I the mean, body. if you're able to bring some and not the other... If he's dead, we can negotiate correspondence and alive 150 gold pieces. Each. <coughs> Total. I'd Are these that ruffians there. ties by any means? Or are they outlaws? I deputized, I'm not sure. Honestly, I think I think Harbin's scared of him, to be honest with you. Harbin's scared of his own shadow. Coward. Right. Um, are these the guys that are like the ruffians in town? Yep. Oh. And there are they the red hands or the red bands? Brands. Br like a cow brand? Yeah, but like all one word. Red brand. Red brand. Like yeah. Rembrandt. Yeah. Red like a, like a Quix is a chocolate bar brand. She says they wear red cloaks. I don't know. That's cute. Oh, Good for them. Why would anyone synchronized. do that? It would be a horrible tactic in warfare. Easily spotted. Right? Anybody I with think a red they're cloak, going more them. for an intimidation tactic. Like, they're kind of, they're kind of, you know, roughing, you know, people up and just kind of being jerks. And then you could be like, oh, don't mess with him. He's a red brand. Look at that cloak. All that tells me is they do their laundry in two piles. <laughs> You have Absolutely. to do laundry in separate piles? If you have deep colors, yeah. I, I, That's I, how you end up rosé on everything. 
I think Harbin says, like, oh, they're just like they're just a mercenary guild. They're not that much trouble. I personally, he is a moron. Mm-hmm. I that we can agree on. Personally, you know, I just have this one little mining exchange, but I think I could probably, I could probably gather some friends, and I think we could probably really kind of take over governing this town from him, and we could probably establish a much more secure democracy. Sure, let's say that. One could say a Main Street Union. That also sounds good. Okay, I have an iridescent opal. And- sure, right. right. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, so if you guys want to do a rock exchange, uh, yeah. we can definitely come up with rocks to exchange. You also would know that obviously if you wanted to do gem related sales here, you did pick up some gems and stuff, you'd be able to make those swaps here. Like RuneScape all over again. It does. All right. Oh, and apparently in the process of this, we got a, in, a, a bishop with your insight check of oh, a natural one. Good time. The chat has decided to gift you a trinket. So oh, go ahead you, and Chad. roll me a percentile if you would, oh, Jake. Right. So merciful. <laughs> Give him time. We'll oh, s- no. Ooh, 51. All right, 51. Let me open Dead up. center. Let's open up this here so that we are going to go to... Bullseye. Paladin Trinkets, 51. It okay. gives you a chargeable moon crystal. Apparently. There's nothing for your rolls except for your confidence. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I work this into the story. Maybe I find it later. Maybe you find it later. Indeed. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see. Okay, yeah, we'll have you find that in just a minute because it doesn't really fit into the mining exchange. Sure. Uh, so I just got one of them loot boxes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that you know what? If you bought one, I would give it to you in that. And she'd just be like, "Well, I don't know how that got in." Go ahead. Uh, you know what? And she's I'm, gonna. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna Nelly. buy one for sure. <laughs> With All my right. one insight, I'll buy a normal one. I'm not buying All that right. gold All one. Right. You buy That's a normal one, Poppycock. You buy I'll a pay normal it one. One gold for this trinket. It's so you... my gold. <laughs> <laughs> you buy it, you're sifting through, you find a handful of different rocks that you may end up suiting or, or changing with soot later. And then you I like just re- give them to her. Yeah, I, you just reach really down rocks. and you 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 feel something if it's odd. You feel it feels like a like the bucket is not sized to this, right? But mm-hmm. it feels like a sword hilt. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> through the dirt, just out comes this sword what was your de- the red knight right yes yes indeed so we'll make this a crimson blade with the symbol of the red knight as the hilt of this sword or the pommel of this sword. sure um i mean i <laughs> don't know it be man. a rapier it could be a rapier sure, sure oh you yeah. know what the we'll make this sort of i forget what they call it the cage sort of part the of part. the rapier yeah uh, the rapier here yeah sure yeah that'll kind of be like a red knight kind of vibe ah, here beautiful it is a sword that has the symbol of your god and apparently i'm gonna have to remember this it shines whenever there's undead in a 120 foot radius wow i don't remember putting that one in there but i did so that's a that's a that's a minor that's a magical, minor magical item, item. i'm not gonna count it as a magic item like it won't be a magical sword uh, that's totally fair, but, and I yeah. appreciate having How this... could it not be a magical sword? You just pulled the, uh, the sword from the gravel. It's not like a plus one magical sword. I'm not, give, I'm not letting it overcome magic. You know what? Fuck it. I don't care. I'll give it to you. It's... <laughs> so we're describing this divination that has just become a... Sure. You know what? It, it is just a rapier but it does count as magical for the purposes of overcoming damage resistance. Oh, Banshee's become me. <laughs> uh, I, I say, no takesy, no takesies, backsies, and then I leave. And she's Hello? like, and she's like, and like, she like goes back to that box of stuff that she puts in the thing, and it's not that big, so she see her start digging through it, like, what the fuck were there swords in this thing? I've I've already slammed five gold pieces <laughs> on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. man and I'm looking at Bronze and like, right, what, what did I tell you? All uh, right. Go ahead and roll me a percentile there, Zenith. 
I don't know if I'm going to give you a trinket or I'm just going to determine some random things, but we'll see what comes up here. Listen, it's up to you, man. I know. Lando never also, gives well, me anything. Hold on. I <laughs> fucked up the roll. Also, why is it so slow on D&D Beyond? It, the rolls can be like, it can tank hard. Okay. Hold the up. The Cobalt Union is actually off after oh, I just, Dinosaur I just, Central. Just, I just want to say this is fucking wild. Did you just roll 192? I, hold on, hold on. I, I rolled, hold on. I accidentally rolled 2d100, so two percentile dice, but they both came up as 96. Wow. Okay. Wow. The old 96er. The old 96er. That's when you get mad at each other and just turn around. <laughs> you ate the gristle twice. Dad, there's got to be something good in there. This okay. Is, all right. For the sake nine... of John Candy, please. All right. All right. All right. L listen. A one in 10,000 chance. No, I, I, let's see. Okay. A one in 10,000 chance. Do it for uh, Uncle Buck. <laughs> all right. And I'm going to fish around a little bit on this list to see what I can come up with. You can um, hit me with it later. No, no. I got it. All right. Oh. Also, three Diva skins. Did we take a long rest? Uh, you have not. Okay. So I just want to make sure before I start mm. fiddling with things. Uh it's like good old All right. All right. So gambling. no normally. <laughs> so the way like and you may disagree based on the the rapier that was just pulled from this loot box, <laughs> but normally the way I have like what I consider a like truly powerful or useful kind of trinket is usually the 100 spot on the table like it's of, sure. a, of a higher power level as it were of course um but i'm gonna say the ability to roll double 96s mm -hmm. is probably about as close to rolling 100 and in fact it's actually harder than rolling 100 yeah. on a d100 so you will pull forth from this loot box an amulet i will let you determine the makeup of what it looks like okay. let Seneth decide what it looks like metal stone however once per long rest which i don't mm -hmm. think you technically can use it actually you could use it now because of the way it's written so once no. per long rest it allows you to utilize a meta magic option that you don't have oh, oh. <laughs> That is surprise, takes in so normally obviously you only have limited usage of meta magic as a sorcerer yeah. and with tasha's cauldron and another thing they've added more so you have a limited a finite number so this would allow you to use one you haven't chosen and i'm gonna let you use it now even though you technically because the way it's written you have none as of right now because you don't get them till third level so yeah. once per long rest this will let you utilize a meta magic option that you do not have. Wow. So there you go. And In meta magic us incredible. to the third level. <laughs> you might. <laughs> I'm well, feeling nice. incredibly just... confident about Banshee slaying. <laughs> just fucking digging and I just this amulet that is it's not gold. Sure. It's just simple twine. Mm -hmm. The amulet itself is uh it's just silver. And in the center of it it has a crystal and it's it's kind of like one of those like almost i'm not runescape what's the other one skyrim crystal where it's kind of mm -hmm. jagged and three-pointed sure and it's just wound in, in gold wire around in the amulet I'm like, oh right well that's that's kind of nice bronson you you've got to spend the five gold <laughs> i have 18 uh -huh. and i've seen <laughs> produced from this yeah Are you, yeah absolutely all <laughs> right slam down this I is incredible. I, go ahead and roll me a percentile. This is this is. Oh. I'm gonna say like for this session, these these come out of these loot boxes. It's not gonna be an every session thing, but for right now, yeah, this is where microtransaction. Yeah. We were blessed by Lady Timora herself. Yeah, ninety four. Jesus, let's God. go, buddy. Wow, wow, everybody's rolling real high today. All right, ninety four. I was playing. X Men multiplayer cabinet as Colossus or Nightcrawler twenty four seven in nineteen ninety four. All right, let's see what we got ninety four for the cleric. All right, it is apparently. I feel bad because this one pales in comparison to the other two that were just pulled out of there. Um, 
I the fact I'm even getting anything is ridiculous in the first place. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you this one because you could use your oh no, never mind. I was gonna say the re-roll, but that's for a new (laughs) one. I'll let you re-roll it. I'll let you re-roll it if you want. Oh man, the depravity of of (laughs) of using (laughs) my advantage on on loot buckets. I mean, listen, the first four. The fact, like, as long as he pulls something out, like, this is going to be satisfaction. So, please, go ahead. So, what you pull out is you pull out a picture frame. (laughs) And inside that picture frame, you know in your heart of hearts that this photo that is signed is 100% a signed photo of Shantaea. Whoa. No. No. Like, you you know... And is it it's a tin? This is gonna be like a tin from like Frontiers World. Like, yeah, man. It's it. You pull it out. It's got it's got the glass on it. It's in the frame. You know, it's it's what your what your mind's eye depiction of what she looks like is with like her name signed on. Want to go there just yet? Oh, oh man. <laughs> There's the cornucopia in the background. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. well, I'm trying to think of the most country version of heavy metal <laughs> oh i love that I it can possibly think of that you know <laughs> bountiful one herself signed which is even i don't know but i'm gonna tell everyone about the buckets over here <laughs> <laughs> i promise you this i i'm i'm clutching i'm just i turn into a swifty i i just melt <laughs> beauty the bounty the beer thank you <laughs> I can't. I, 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 I like can't. you see her go like dig through one of her own buckets and she's like, I don't, sure. I, I tip guess. her with a blessing of Shantae. And she, <laughs> she, she's really dumbfounded right now. She's not really sure what's going on. LB, I think you bought one as well, right? I did, but I'm totally okay with just getting rocks because I'm yeah. not only going to get the rocks from my bucket. From everybody uh, else's bucket. bucket. Well, go ahead and I left roll me rocks. that percentile anyway. Let's see. Six levels later, I'm going to cast Moonbeam on all of these. They'll become incredibly powerful. All right, here we go. Wow, I love how it levels. Like it's, it's like letting us know incoming. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. No nice. shit. A deep blue piece of flint. Ooh. That when struck with steel produces not sparks, but water. Oh, that is so cool. That is very cool. That is so say it's right the up your stone. And, and Don't call it that. <laughs> uh, can't control it. And anyways, no, I think she's, she absolutely does not believe this was from her god. Because Lando give, never gives her shit. Sure. <laughs> so she's like... Oh, this is gorgeous. Have you seen one of these before? And she's like, and she's like, what is happening? She's like so confused right now. Uh, she's like, no, I haven't seen blue colored flint before. What is going on? Have, have, have you ever, just out of curiosity, opened one of your own dirt boxes? And she's like, well, no, hang on. And she'll like, and she's just like, I don't. And she like takes gold out of her own pocket and like puts it on the counter and takes her own gold and s- picks up a bucket and she digs through a bucket and she's like, this is so stupid. Like, what the hell is going on? Like, I don't, I don't know. The dirt box is the preferred nomenclature, Senate. Uh. <laughs> Let's see what she pulls out from her dirt box here. I just imagine that you still got like little tears coming down your Richard. Got a blank space, baby. Don't tell you write your name. And she pulls out a tin, like 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 an Altoid sized tin <laughs> that's not obviously branded, and opens it up, and there are eight pills inside this little box. And she goes, nope, don't leave. Hang on. And then she does the same ritual again to another one of these boxes. And she's like, hang on, let's see. Can I roll to see if I can figure out what those pills do? One for happy, one for sad. (laughs) 
Is there a red one and a blue one? Like, what? Sure, you can make a roll. And then she goes, what? She's like reaching into another bucket and she's like, I don't. What is what is happening? And you reach as she pulls out this bag of dark red crimson liquid and sets it on the counter and then pulls out another one and then what? another one. And she goes, what the? What you, what and she like pokes it that? with like a like what? like a little knife. And like it kind of you see it spill out and it looks like it's blood. Penguin sack. And she's just like, no, that's not real. What is going blood. on? Is that is that blood? Are you No, it's up? fake blood. Oh. Oh. Fuck is going on? Do you want to play a prank on someone? Well now, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, this has been fun. Do you guys want to go get a drink? What was your what was your role to it was, identify? It was a two. You're not sure, but you feel like you're like, I think I've seen my mom take those pills before. Oh, <laughs> right. I'll leave that at that. Yeah. Glad you said that before I stole one and popped it. I mean, you, you could have. You can still. But you also Sounds rolled it too, so you're not like super sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, mm, mm. right. Well, she's like, over, I guess over come back shoulder. anytime. I don't know what's going on anymore. It was lovely to meet you. Yes. Hey, how much gold would you let me spend right now? I will let you, sp- I'll let you get two more. Wow. Wow. It's been its quest for natural male enhancement. <laughs> oh my God. What is happening? Uh, I love I'll, everything about this game. I'll derail us for, for another 10 minutes really quickly. All right. Give me, give me two more rolls and yeah, then we'll take a quick one. break for like five, 10 minutes. Let everybody get up. You let me know what you roll. I'm just going to reroll these. Is he going to roll 96 twice again? Jesus. Imagine. I'm, right, I'm out of good stuff, so I don't no, I have to go back to the regulars. Fine. What is this roll? A 62 and a, and a 3. Okay. You pull out a bedroll from this bucket. A bedroll that automatically unfurls itself whenever you feel tired. Dude, that is such a bougie thing for me to have. <laughs> yep. And also a pipe that can only be lit by your magic. Oh, that's just cruel. <laughs> the best day ever. So I'll I, I leave the I leave the opportunity for more derailment of two more trinkets for anybody else who wants it. But then, other than that, I'm capping it at that. I think I'll take you up on that drink. So what? How's that? How's that blue rock work again? I don't know. It's just pretty. Mm. Do you, Do you want me to try to use it? Well, I don't want to set anything on fire in here, so let's let's go somewhere else. Indeed. We've done enough of that. <laughs> All right. Um, I will, oh, thank you. <laughs> She's like, yeah, like, sure. Yeah, Jake, were you already outside? I couldn't tell. Uh, yeah, no, I left. <laughs> I said I left you. and I left. I'm outside swishing around my new blade. <laughs> <laughs> I've right. named it the Cormish opening. I like it. All right, so the the party is now heading as a group to the Stone Hill Inn, correct? Where I think everybody said they were going to go go get a drink. Yep. So our party has left the Miners Exchange and is making their way to the Stone Hill Inn to get some drinks and kind of relax, kind of figure out, I guess, what their next steps are going to be. So... You guys travel back up. In the center of town, opposite the town green, stands a large, newly built roadhouse of fieldstone and rough-hewn timbers. The common room is filled with locals nursing mugs of ale or cider, all of them eyeing you with curiosity. It has five of its six rooms free, so there is plenty of room if you guys would like to stay here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there is... You see that... There is a young, I guess, human male behind the counter, the proprietor of this establishment. And you'll also, again, see there are a variety of people. And in typical Dungeons & Dragons fashion, there are a variety of different people. And they're all nursing their mugs and talking. And potentially, rumors can be had because that's how taverns work in D&D. So... 
what would you all like to do? I got first round. So it runs to the barn. Okay. I grab a table. I love her. All right. So she's phenomenal. They have obviously they said ale. They're also big on cider, as you do know that there is. Uh, you did see kind of on your way, and there's a big apple orchard on mm. the kind of northwestern side of town. So we love it. we've got all kinds of hard cider here as well from the eater. What mass. kind of ale ales do you have? <laughs> They're like we got ale. <laughs> the only appropriate response. <laughs> but I'm gonna follow soot to the front because I'm gonna put water to get in it. It'll probably make it paler. Ew. <laughs> Proxy's <laughs> I mean, just crying. <laughs> Can I get four ciders, please? Sure. Uh, and he'll say, "Yep, yeah, sure." And I'll go bake up the four ciders, mm-hmm. put them on there. I don't know what I'm gonna charge for this, but it's a minimal amount. It's copper pieces, yeah. realistically. So here you go. What's your name? Because my name is Toblin. Toblin. That's a cool name. Goblin Stonehill. Goblin the Goblin. (laughs) He'd be dead if he was Goblin or a Goblin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm Soot. Nice to meet you, Soot. Are you guys going to... You're new in town. Clearly, are you guys going to be staying for a while? Yeah, we're going to need rooms. Um, How, How many? We've got... We have six rooms, but one... I haven't seen him in a while. It's this guy, Sildar Hallwinter's renting one of the six rooms. Oh. Hmm. We got the other five available. If you, I don't know if you yeah. want one or just out of morbid curiosity, did he pay up front? For, if you haven't seen him in a while, just want to make sure you're getting paid. Obviously, well, he was paying, you know, by like each morning. So he paid for he paid for a couple of days because he was going to travel for a bit. Right. But I think he was supposed to arrive, you know, today yeah. or yesterday. Right. So he didn't stiff you on the bill. Is that a thing he does? Do you know him? No, just no. just you know, just conversation. That's good. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. he seemed like a pretty stand up guy, but no, I, he, I, he did. He was. He... What was? <laughs> I'm sorry. We. Mm. He's. You found him stiff. Not. <laughs> he's not coming back to town. So he did try to stiff me on the rest of no, the. No, 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 no. I no, can no. cover his room if he. No, I I, mean, I wasn't even it. worried about it. You brought oh, it up. Sorry. Did right, okay. you leave anything? I, I mean, it's not really like I was going to go like, do you want to check it? I hot. Right. You're new. Uh, so four this... of your finest rooms. Sure. All right. And he will. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll set aside four rooms for you all. Huh. Now I feel like I should go check his room. I mean, I... Um. well, we were supposed to meet him and one of the the rock seeker brothers um, oh sure and we kind of found him anyways so no he's not coming back at least not for a while yeah, um, yeah. so yeah if if he did leave anything in his room I, i'm sure that you could give it to the other rock seekers and yes because they're friends nice but you don't know us i obviously i don't i'm not trying to like I feel like it sounds like I'm trying to do something, but I'm really not. Yeah, just, no, it just it, it just makes more sense, right, to give to the 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 other rock seekers because they know each other and they're fine. He's he's moved on, right? Um, I spin around the bar <laughs> to look into the part into the the, the patronage. Uh, I wave from nine, my table, looking for red cloaks. Is that what you say? Oh, you're looking for red cloaks. I'm sorry, uh, you do not see any red cloaks in the bar. Is it possible with the nine that I discovered that I am colorblind? <laughs> we can establish this right now if you'd like. No, I don't, I don't <laughs> no. wish that upon anyone, Ricky Bobby. Um. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. So here's mm. your here's your room. Thank keys. you, I appreciate right, that. Thank you. Sorry, we should, ciders. I'll there, grab I'll grab two of the ales for you. Are you, got, <laughs> no, are you or ciders? Anything else, are you guys? Uh, just. Some chips or onion rings? If you Do you have guacamole? No, we have applesauce, yeah. though. Do you, you know have what? quesadillas? Right, nope, from, sorry. from the famous nation of Lexico. Jesus Christ, we're going to change the squeeze. The squeeze is always forgotten. worth the squeeze. <laughs> he says, we have two horses to stable. Oh, that's right. 
Uh, all right, yeah, we could probably. Well, I mean, we don't really have staples Listen, right, here. I'm, I'm just gonna put another five going on the table. Be like, uh, keep drinks, food, and staple coming, and we are going to sit. Sit, go, sit, go. Oh, oh bye. All right, all right. Oh, bye. go. Slide hey, it at the table. <laughs> all right. So, can I sleight of hand take one of those gold off the away? Counter? Yeah, sure, you can try it. I mean, this is not my forte, but I'm incredibly frugal. Uh-huh. You know, like a lot of my roles, it's not, you know, it doesn't light the world on fire. It's an 11. Let's see. I'm going to say that Toblin is like, he's not paying attention because he's just like, what was that? <laughs> I'm like, he's so, con- he's like, do I go upstairs? He's really confused about this. And you go to kind of like, that coin away and as you go to do it a pretty strong hand kind of comes down and kind of like swats your hand away and you see that having made their way back around behind the bar is a dwarven bartender she kind of swats your hand away and she says now you wouldn't be trying to take our tip here your your friend here just went out of his way to make sure we're keeping all that food coming and what other oh, I hadn't weird... heard a final price on all those goods. I thought he'd made a miscalculation. Well, I, I assumed anything extra was just going to be tip. Now, now, uh, we'll see about that. Where I'm from, we wait and see the service. Well, it seems your friend was kind of, I don't know, he seemed, they were spouting off about all sorts of fancy, we'll find something that sounds like whatever they we're you said you didn't food. even have stables, so how are you supposed to provide this service? It sounds I mean, like I'll we're find taken stables. for a ride. I'll, oh, we'll I'll find, find stables, stable. will we? Sure. Five I... gold? Yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, you kidding me? <laughs> you owned a bar, Robert. You know, you dropped that much money off the counter and say, make this happen. I, yeah. You don't want to know what I did for five gold. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you got your brewery license? <laughs> I, will, I will relinquish my pride and slowly... Slowly pull my hand away. And she just kind of pulls it towards her and kind of winks at you as she kind of puts it in the till behind the counter. I'm going to slowly Kool-Aid man backwards. (laughs) The Homer Simpson into the bush. Yeah, Yeah, right? (laughs) And then you see like her kind of go over and she starts talking to the other proprietor and they're kind of just having a conversation as they're looking around, but you notice their eyes... Quite frequently, are making their way over to your table as they're talking to each other. Get anything done. I knew these bartenders. Did you find somebody that you liked? She was really pretty. You'd like him gruff, right? Seems you had a not. Oh Oh. no, that was presumptuous of us. Sorry. Yeah, (laughs) I found her fetching. Well, my first ex-wife, actually. Um, you know. You, you round in the fay, you find out, you know, and the first two were Eldarin, and, you know, I, I just figured I picked the wrong season. First, I started with spring, and then I went to autumn, and maybe I should have found the chill of winter first. I... Or just put a flag in your hand. Yeah, button. I was <laughs> sliding the other one forward like, ah, who has I mean, not? If you want, I could pretend and turn into one, and then I can I can flirt. Yeah, I believe you. That way you can get the experience. I actually that would make me feel rather uncomfortable. So I think oh, okay. I, uh, yeah, I would like to just find yourself. Okay, I mean this isn't what I really look like. You know that, right? Well, no, no, I oh. don't actually. Yeah, no, this is a lot for a first <laughs> beverage conversation. I'm sorry. Uh, like you actually <laughs> notice that as this is happening, the 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 just prototypical rumors that happen in the D&D taverns <laughs> have stopped and they're all listening to your table right now. <laughs> oh no. Like everybody's just like, "What is what?" And then like they notice that there's like that, you know, how when you're having the conversation and everything else kind of dies down and you become a very aware of how loud you're speaking. And then, like, they all, like, oh, and they all just kind of go back to their conversations. But mm-hmm. Okay, good. As the conversation picks back up, I lean in and I say, hey, do you guys think perhaps we should go check out Sildar's room before, 
the innkeep goes ahead and raids it in case there's any valuable information, perhaps a map to where the other rock seekers may be. I could go if you keep them busy with the five gold of <laughs> absolute. Oh no! Do you think was that was that not enough? I think enough. if you give them any more money, Bronson might have a coronary. You over... don't give them any more money. You've overpaid them <laughs> by about twenty fold, perhaps. Oh, right. I mean, super generous, and as far as greasing wheels go, it's a wonderful lubricant. So if you guys don't mind, while this is happening, you see like Toblin brings over just like, like a just a giant like rack of like ribs from like like half of a cow worth of ribs and just like like a monster bah! hunter style platter. Yeah, just food. drops it on the Whoa. table and then like two pitchers of cider, and it's just like yeah, oh, we're two gonna cats actually cooked all of this. And then I am I am incredibly <laughs> impressed. Uh, Thank and then you, and then they're just like, where the hell is Lexico? You hear him like muttering as he's walking back. <laughs> Quesadillas. How do we make those? <laughs> like, just Deep ribs. rummaging through a cookbook. <laughs> it's just like the index. Q, Q, Q. <laughs> so, are you opposed to me checking out his room? I know you were. I want to check what? in bef oh. before a thing. I won't take anything unless it's a map to where those guys potentially are. I'm not going to steal so much as gather information. Yeah. Uh, no. No. I'm not. Uh, I'm not against that at all. I think that would be a good idea. Right. As we agreed. Right. Morality. Not stealing. Yeah. Scouting. Mm -hmm. Then in that case, I think that's fine. Bronson, your thoughts. These ribs are delicious. Go for it. <laughs> all right. Very well. I stand up by you and I say, "Oh, I think I'll retire for a short while." This. Cider, delicious, but it has left me feeling a bit faint. And I take a key from Seneth and I head on upstairs. Okay. You uh, head upstairs. There's three rooms and three rooms on either side of the hallway. Okay. Uh, uh, are there numbers on them? Or... We'll say that for the convenience, yes. Uh, yours key is room number two. All right. <laughs> what other, what other <laughs> numbers did the keys have? Uh, two through six. Okay, so very well. So I'm looking at door number one then being a Sildars. That is how the math works. Great. Very well. I check to see if it's unlocked. It is locked. Aha. Uh -huh. I would love to pick that lock and if necessary, make a stealth check. Well, you sound you're... like a, a Kentucky Derby announcer. <laughs> well, I'm trying to do this quickly here. I know. <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and make me a lock picking check very well i have thieves tools and i also have sleight of hand proficiency so i'm just gonna roll sleight of hand because sure. the numbers are the same sure ah a 10 10 is enough it is not a very hard lock here so you're able to just and open up the door but it wasn't as stiff as him <laughs> And inside the room, it's pretty, it's pretty barren here. You know, it's a very, you don't feel like he, I mean, if one, just looking around, it doesn't seem like he might've spent too much time here and also might have more of a, either he had everything he really needed on him or, mm -hmm. or not, but you can go ahead and make an investigation check to look around uh, this room. All right. Minimalist. Ah, a 15. Okay. Yeah, you see, you know, he's got there's there's a change of clothes and stuff like that, and it's not really, it's not like he's got like oh yeah, here's his really important correspondence with like a list of all of his tasks that he has to complete that he didn't get a chance to. All right. And no, there is no map. All right. Well, then I sneak back out, I lock the door, and then I go lay down for three seconds. I get up, make big creaky noises, and then I'll come back downstairs and say, man, that bed is uncomfortable. <laughs> and then I will go and sit back down and I'll say, nothing, guys. I didn't uh -oh. even have to do a distraction. I was going to turn into a squirrel. Oh, that would have been fun. Well, that's okay. You can turn into a squirrel. Mm -hmm. I can turn into a lot of small creatures. Like a cat. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I don't like that look. <laughs> I just no. the wheels are turning. I did grease them. Good to know. I'm gonna continue on my beef rib. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
since we're all getting to know each other better is I guess my family grew I grew up next to him obviously and apple I... pie comes out on the table oh thank you Ooh. um my parents owned a coal mine and I got to go there all the time and help and talk to the people and that's where I found my love of rocks but coal is just like one of my favorites I have a lot of favorite rocks which I shouldn't go into because I've been told that it does get go on like I am hmm. now but yeah I don't really have a god I, I follow Lando but my, that's because my parents followed Lando, but I'm not an elf, so the, the, he doesn't really. Somebody's gonna me. say it. I can see it on both everybody's faces over there. I'm waiting to hear. Go ahead. Uh, we'll just... I refuse to give that to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the principle at this point. Well, that is We're... wonderful. It's so Lando. I, mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with specifically Elvish God mostly. Yeah, Lando Calrissian. Oh, there okay. it is. Thank you. Well, all right. Well, you know, it is difficult to make a connection with a god. Myself, the the Red Knight, she's cold, calculating, but she does appreciate hard work and all of that. I hail from Luskin myself, and as you could Luskin. probably tell by my accent, mm -hmm. hey, we're okay. <laughs> of course you are. Huh? Telling yourself that. Went to Neverwinter, got my ass kicked, came down here, and now, yeah, Both but that's down. it. Yes, yes. Well, my family's from Luskin, but I, I went out because it was my parents have nine children and things were getting a little tight in the house. So I made my way and I lost my way, made it again, and now here I am. What's it like to have siblings? Oh, it's it's wonderful. You hit a point where after about five or six, second in line, mm. you end up doing some parenting yourself, which mm. is, which is fine. It's what you grow up with, but you know, we, we got in a lot of trouble and we helped each other out of a lot of trouble, which is how I've always lived my life. Come from large families as well. I can relate to that. Please elucidate. Hallucinate. Continue. Sorry, these ciders are starting to kick. <laughs> oh, I come from a long line of Shante devotees. Braden, the patriarch of the family, generations back. He roamed the same fields and blessed the same VFW halls that I do today. We've had several of them depart and leave the nest. We've had some go on up to Neverwinter, some all the way up to the far north. Handful of Baldur's Gate. A couple of them became beekeepers. Oh, a honey yeah. bee. Absolutely. Ooh. Believe it or not. <laughs> Believe it. <laughs> Got my dead joke. Uh, named a few owlbears in their day as well. Really? Mm -hmm. Never seen an owlbear before. Or a hoot. Absolutely. What do you say you're a favorite rock would be said oh boy if you got to choose just one if i have to choose this one it would probably be it would probably be coal because it's soft and you can use it for a lot of things you can use it to write if you're careful enough and when you put them together you can you can light them on fire and when it burns it just has this deep dark coal like quality and it the embers inside emanate through leaving this red light within the blackness of the coal hmm. you see like another plate come sliding over Ooh. and it, it's it's no it's uh, <laughs> it is grilled snake with pine nuts they slide Ooh. that over and then just like a bowl of scrambled eggs <laughs> like they're just going through whatever <laughs> they have <laughs> like Oh, they found some tube snake. <laughs> I'll take the eggs, please. <laughs> <laughs> Is that snake eggs? He's like, no, it's it's chicken. Ace, my man. Quail uh, egg person myself, actually. And he's just like, you, you see them like Mexico. They they go they go back, and you can just see again each time. Now you're paying more attention as Toblin and and the the female dwarven bartender are just like. Ow. 
And they just like go like, what do we? Okay. And you see them come out, and they again they're coming over again, and there's like they're like it's like a bowl of acorn soup, and they're like, oh, here you go. And it's just like oh. going through whatever stuff they have. Do um, we need more food? I think this is enough food, guys. And he says, "I was told to keep it coming." No, you know I'm sorry. No, right. I'm, I'm yeah, we sorry. Don't want it to go to waste. No, yeah, yeah. We we might have a misunderstanding as to what that means. Where I come from, that means keep it coming, as I ask for more. Oh, right, right, right. Because like, if you just keep it coming, right? Like, mm. yeah, yeah. But like, there's well, no... not a lot of people say that. So this yeah, is no, I understand stuff. that. That was that was that was my fault. But tell you what, we've got more than enough here. How about we? Share some with these lovely patrons. Oh, sure, it's your money. No, all right. Bring start this with this, into a fogo let's, meow. Let's start with this thing, and I, I'm going to use my mage hand to scoot the acorn soup away from me. <laughs> Peasants food, and that's that's also a magic, wild magic roll. Really? Oh quick. god! All right, oh, let's. Oh no! All right, let's do it. I'm on one and four. Acorn soup would be so nasty. It's a fifteen. Acorn We're on one and five. Good. It's like a squash, right? Like it's not it's gonna be. Yeah, oh, I guess acorn like... is. You have to boil the hell out of boil the hell, hell out of acorns to get there. Yeah. That's I'm why they still have. That they don't That's boil. why they still have it because they boiled all the acorns at one point. And they're like, we're gonna fucking use these one day. <laughs> Full of tannins. It's it's Nothing just. But they're the most just like bitter things. Nobody orders the snake. We've had that snake ready to go for a while. Let's put the snake on the table. Now I'm just Snake's taking little bites. I'm taking little bites of different things while my mage hand also feeds me like other options. Mm. Mm. We survey a rattlesnake brought. I mean, Ooh, snake I is not be... snake's not bad. Yeah. Snake's not bad, not bad at all. Neither is gator. No, no, it's not. Then it's mm. your turn. All right, what am I doing? To share. Oh, sorry. And I passed the ribs. Right there, you yeah. go. I didn't know that I was hogging them all. <laughs> well. You keep your secrets, then. And I'll just keep my egg and tie. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm sorry. I got distracted with the fact that they were fucking... I think... I'm pretty sure I saw him, Toblin, grinding part of the bar down to make sawdust soup. They were running out of food. You see they no. had, like, some desserts, other desserts behind the counter, and then he's just like... And she just <laughs> puts them <laughs> behind her. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, no, I... It was acorn cake. Acorn. <laughs> they have a lot of a lot of nuts, right? Acorns, yeah. pine nuts. Yeah. Pine nut marzipan pine. goes back under the counter. You know? Pine cone no pie, pistachios, pine though. cone soup. <laughs> the apple pie is phenomenal. Well, the apple pie is very good. You would think so, being from an orchard area. Yes. Correct. Yeah, yeah. That um, and eggs, I'm happy. <laughs> that's all you need. That's the whole food group. Mm -hmm. um, but right, as, as Soot said, grew up together. She was... And is, continues to be my best friend. Uh, she'd bring me rocks. And that's how it started. She would just show me rocks. And she eventually would rattle on about him. She got to the point where she can now do it alphabetically on her favorite rocks. It's quite impressive. But no, I grew up in a humble home. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> we do we do well. Father does well. He is a textile merchant. And he dabbles in other businesses and affairs with... Owning properties and mines and, you know, just all that drivel. But yeah, that's 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 all about me, really. Not not much to tell. Just adventuring, you know, out on my own with soot in tow. But yeah, trying to make carve my name on the face of the world, as it were. You say uh, owning mines? Yeah, his parents own I think a couple. Mine own just one. Oh. I mean, you know, ah. they were inherited. What, what exactly? And you're adventuring. That's right, yes. It takes all types. Indeed. I didn't... I I just... I never wanted to be living off, you know, as, as the other kid said, daddy's money. You know, I was more than that. Or at least I want to prove that I am more than that. You know, I'm not very... Well lived. I don't know much of the world, unfortunately, doing homeschooling and learning from Felda. She was my maid and my teacher hmm. and my cook and my seamstress. And she was also my cobbler and she was also my you get the point, right? But yeah, I wanted I wanted to do more. And so 
Soot and I hit the road, and here we are. Well, how about that? You learn something new about your dear friends, and then you don't feel so bad about the five gold that they have paid for this night at this here tavern. Again, was that was that too little? Should I put more? Yeah, like one drink is like a copper, and then like what's a, a copper? <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh. we have to go over that. So ten uh. coppers makes one silver. And then right. there's the thing a that my that we don't talk about. And then ten <laughs> silver make one gold. I'm sorry, hold on. So copper thing... is the money you throw in fountains. The the thing that my fountains. <laughs> the thing that my forks are made out of are used as currency. Mm-hmm. Even your spoons, yes, your silver spoons. Yes, we had I had one of those. Actually. Of course, you... why, yeah. why, why, why it was you... engraved with my name. I look at my clothes, they're like a little bit threadbare. I look at these two with their families that own mines, and I'm oh, like, mine Ugh. is just covered in dirt, though. Yeah, yeah, but still, you come yeah. from money. Yeah. And I'm like, well, this is good company to be in. Can I lean back and listen to whatever gossip's going on? Sure, go ahead and make me a perception check. All right. I just see a rib flying by with a mage hand. <laughs> <laughs> An 11. All right, we'll say the nearest the nearest person to you um, is a gnome, and you hear her saying, yeah, to somebody else at the table. The Red Brands pretty much hassle every business in town, except for the Fandolin Miners Exchange. They don't want any trouble with Halia. Anybody else like to listen into the surrounding conversations? I'm going to go join another table okay. with a plate of food that we're not going to eat and just like kind of like walk over and she just hi I'm so sorry I didn't mean to interrupt but we apparently ordered like way too much food do you guys want some of this this is a charcuterie board yeah and the one guy's like oh, I mean I just sure all right and you can see this guy also in a similar fashion to you you can see he's got a lot of like his knuckles and the joints in his hands are encrusted with, like, dirt and dust. Mm-hmm. His face is all kind of smudgy. You would guess that this guy is a miner based on your history with mines. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, are you a miner? Yep. Oh, cool. Do you work close by, then? Yeah, you know, just kind of out and around in the mountains yeah, and the streams. Yeah, she sits, sits down. Are you freelance, or do you, like, work for a company? No, uh, I work for me. That's awesome. What do you find in there? Not as much as I like, to be honest. Yeah. But it's also kind of, it's a little sketchy going out of town because, you know, I mean, I usually stay off the beaten path and in the streams and in the woods, but apparently a bunch of marauders have been attacking trade caravans and things making their way yeah. through the area nearby. I heard, the, oh, was it the goblins or are you talking about the red dashes? No, I don't think it's I. Well, I've heard that goblins might be working with these marauders. I mean, I haven't seen them personally, thankfully, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, thank Lathander, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I haven't seen them, but yeah, basically. And I heard Harbin's looking to get people to run them off because it's possibly impacting people coming through the town. Yeah. So he wants people, I don't know, he's got like, there's a board outside his office. He's got some oh, things cool. he wants to get, you know, jobs and stuff. But yeah, I heard that the goblins might be working with them. So I don't know if that's related or just a rumor. But I'll be honest, I definitely don't stay out as late as I normally would. Because it's mm-hmm. just me, so I got nobody to look over my shoulder while I'm working. So. Oh, you should always go mining with somebody. What if there's a collapse or something? Do you at I- least tell someone where you're going? I mean, I don't know. It's the freedom of being you know, self-made. Just do my own thing. That's true, I guess. Well, I don't want to brag, but you don't really need to worry about the goblins anymore. Their camp has been decimated is a good word for it. Oh, great. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's the marauders are part of that, but if so, uh, even better. Yeah, but... I mean, we're an adventuring type. Well, we're we're planning on helping out a little bit. So, if there's any way that you, a person of the the ground, <laughs> thinks we should be going. I mean, 
I don't know, if you're looking to go mining, there's definitely some spots to find. But really, that's... Really, I wake up, and then I go mine, and then I come mm. back, and then I have, have a couple a drink. drinks, and that's kind of what I do. Yeah. That sounds like a great life. I mean, it's hard work, but it's not too bad. It can yeah. be too much. <laughs> hard work. Well, good. Enjoy that. If we get extra drinks or something, I'll send one over. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Have a good night. You too. I'm just eating all this free food. I've I've mage handed acorn etouffee over to another table. <laughs> acorn <laughs> etouffee. <laughs> I like it. You cut back. It's, it's me just explaining cryptocurrency. <laughs> I don't understand. It's how we get. No, it's your money making you money, man. Like, listen, you're not paying attention. And the, this little kid, like Toblin's son, comes walking over. Yeah, you know, I've heard about that stuff. My friend, he told me there's these other places and they bring things from there. Like, I heard, he. I, I don't know if it's true, but I heard there's a place called, like, Eberron, and they bring these things from there, and they sell them to people, and they're called non-Faerunian tokens, because they're from Eberron. <laughs> You're oh. getting it, man. You're getting it. <laughs> yeah, like, my friends are talking about it. I think, like, I don't know. Yeah, but you don't actually get them. You get, like, a picture of it, right? I've never seen one, but that's what, that's what I heard. Yeah, no. I no, don't understand yeah. what all this has to do with chupacabras. <laughs> no, you don't say that. <laughs> yeah, if you say it three times, they actually, I don't know why I'm from New York all of a sudden. You say it three <laughs> hey! times, they show up. Hey, what are you talking Mar about? Gabagoo! <laughs> hey, if you'd like some ribs, help yourself, random stranger. <laughs> and he's like, wow, awesome. He's like, no, I'm I'm Pip. I'm, I'm Toblin's son. Oh, no, I was talking to this fellow with the unusual accent over here. <laughs> the New Yorker? <laughs> hey, what do you get? <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I mean, more I mean, Pip, you are Yorker more than Della, welcome. If you could find that for me. Uh, anyways, here's a pamphlet about NFTs. Um, <laughs> right. Okay. So, no, <laughs> no red brands. Red brands? Red sashes. Red coats. Red. Red. And he's like, oh, are you guys talking about the red brands? Yeah. Oh, you know of them. So, I uh, yeah, I, I mean, we're here for a second. <laughs> everybody kind of knows about him, but no, my buddy he uh, uh, he almost got caught by him. He found a safe secret tunnel in the woods. All right. Yeah, and they tried to get him, and then he ran away. And he said he saw weird goblins too. Like a normal goblin, or like I mean, I've never seen a goblin, so I feel like they're probably all weird. But he you said see those a are. Goblin? No, no. Oh. I can show you what they look like. He's like, I don't... It's it's 100% safe. a 100% safe. Poor idea. No, this is phenomenal. <laughs> no, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Right. okay. Oh, actually, can I... I'm going to use minor illusion. Okay. I want to I want a minor illusion, like a... Essentially a Funko Pop version of a uh, goblin. Goblin, all right. Yeah. Right. That's That's the, like... The family friendly version of a goblin. Though. Oh, oh, it's yeah. kind of cute, actually. It's in this they form, are. it's adorable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But really, they're. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like a, like a action figure style. Okay, of a goblin. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, no, no, this is what they're supposed to look like, yeah. except your size. How many days do you use minor illusion to give an illusion to minors? My nose starts bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> is that a a roll on the table there? Oh, it is. <laughs> oh no. What we get? I was one through five. We become the red brands. That's a ten and a six, with the six having been rolled first, so it doesn't count, and then the ten. Okay. All right. So you're one, seven. one. Yeah. Oh the dangerous God. game it's you're happening. all playing. I love it so much. I told you, don't give me gambling. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it a lot. Oh, oh, sh oh shit! Okay. In my mage hand from earlier. Oh no! Yeah, head. Yeah. No, you did roll for the mage hand earlier. Did I? Did he? You did indeed. Okay. okay. He's still doing its labor of love and <laughs> transporting ribs. Yeah. Yeah. Pip, my good man, what is your friend's name and where does he live? Oh, his name is Carp, and he lives over at the farm, kind of just to the, the further <laughs> east, further east from here. Carp Alderleaf. Carp they don't let Carp off the farm. <laughs> well, it sounds like he gets up into all sorts of mischief. Yeah. I mean, he sounds like he's a good swimmer. I don't know. We don't really have a lot of like a lot of water around here, so 
don't know. Uh, you could hit me and yeah, he's over there with his mom. They have a farm. Sure. You'll find it. There's not. There's only two farms here, so it's got to be one or the other. Mm. Two farms and the orchard, or well, the orchard. I count that as a farm. Oh, okay, great. Oh, okay. it's kind. It's like an apple farm. Sure. Yeah. No, I count yeah. it as a farm now as well. Right. Although it's right. semantics, whatever. <laughs> like the Hatfield and McCoys. I bet you're really good at stories, Bronson. I've been known to tell a tale or two. Mm-hmm. Well, Bronson. All right, bye. And he leaves. All bye. right, sorry, bye. Tension spans these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. Incredible. Just, right. They're what we call uh, magical tablet kids. You just give them a magic tablet and um, fuck off and do the thing. Um, How will they ever learn to speak to adults if they go and do that? There's oh. such a long bit we can get into with this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Children should be seen and not heard. Right. <laughs> right. Um, curious. In your traveled life, what's the story of your last scar? My last scar? Mm. That's making an assumption, my friend. That's fair. But this lion has any. I mean, uh, I assume you'll, you know, battle worn, tested even. <laughs> this kitten does have claws. But. <laughs> I will say there have been a handful of people that have given me a test before up and down the Tribor Trail. I got myself caught in a little bit of a predicament the last time I was actually in Fandolin. A long a troublemaker? <laughs> Not at all. It was harvest time. We were blessing the harvest. Found myself drinking these same ciders, these same meads, these same ales for a long time. I decided to go make a little deposit over at Harbor Investor's Garden. <laughs> Handful of individuals saw the lion drop his trowel that evening. <laughs> Needless to say, they weren't exactly as enthused as I was <laughs> about my particular blessing of the crops. Mm. I invoked Shanti's name. They actually probably would have grown better. But the thought of him having a little bit of a piece of me on his BLT was too much to handle. We got ourselves in a bit of a tussle, but, you know, it'd be the first time that I've ever wrestled in Fandolin with my pants down, but I prevailed. I was going to ask about that, actually. You don't pull them up, you just go straight for it. Mm. No fear. You know know what they say, if if you are shitting in a field and get caught, you're the guy that was shitting in a field, but if you keep going, the other person's the one that watched. That's Words philosophy. <laughs> Without a doubt. One would argue you were in the right, even. One could argue anything. <laughs> That's true. Here's the barley way. But look at these fields now. Never been more prosperous. You do Snap. good work. Even better. These people couldn't survive without you. We could... Preach crop rotation all we want. But without you out there taking care of these fields and returning nutrients back into it, they need their hand for soot. Thanks. I was like, I've never worked in a farm in my life, but I understand what you're saying. <laughs> Sometimes you have to burn the boats and aka the literal fields to get these folks to understand. Mm-hmm. But then they do, they move on, they come back stronger. It can't be planting the same thing in the same spot every year expecting the same results now this works not how the gray mother works as i set the picture up down next <laughs> to my actual meal kind of give it a little shine what works he, he would be proud of this horn of plenty that we have here sure okay. pissed off if there weren't i have one going on right next to me uh, yeah so you've heard Basically, all of the rumors, except for the rumors that would come from the two people behind the bar, but they've been too busy bringing food, so they uh, haven't had a chance to chat with you, other than mm-hmm. like, hey, we're going to make it really awkward about this guy's room. He might stiff you, but he might not. Like, we don't know what's going on. <laughs> Listen. I tried to warn them. So yeah. It's going to go sit by the fire. All right. Go and do that. What about the rest of you? I'm just drunk enough to go looking for these red brands. What about you boys? 
Oh, not until I get a nice long rest in me. Mm-hmm. Um, talking about it. Drinking, I feel like I practically leveled up. You know, that's Hold hard on. to argue with. You know what? I'm going to leave those up to chance. <laughs> oh, no. Give me a second. Seven street fighting music. You like pina coladas. Oh. Oh. Seneth, Seneth looks at you, Bronson. He's like, you know what? Throws his na- <laughs> uses his mage hand to throw his napkin down indignantly. <laughs> slams the rest of his cider back. He's like, right, let's go looking for trouble, eh? Out of spell slots. This is a horrible idea. As, as Seneth takes a step forward, I want to try and trip him sneakily so he just falls. Convince him he's too drunk to do this right now. Piss on Harbin Western's this <laughs> again. It'd probably be Dex versus Dex, wouldn't it? Sure, yeah. A stealthy trip and a, and a stealthy dodge. All right, I'll do stealth then. I'll just make it a straight Dex roll. Dex versus Dex. Cool. Just thankful every day that I don't have to take a piss in chain Ooh. mail. 19. That's an 8. Whoops. Oh, and you whoops. are tripped by bishop and he and you will stumble and fall oh i'm i'm gonna be the same level of petty that i was last time uh-huh. i'm okay. gonna use my last spell slot for feather fall all right roll that <laughs> surge oh no this is not what i wanted to happen through seven come on baby go high go high go high that's a five oh do it oh no Only me that percentile what do you got Oh no. Another I... fucking flame elemental. No, it's not, is it? No. Oh, okay. Which one? No. 19. Okay. You are wreathed in healing flames and immediately gain 3d10 hit points. I'm already at full health. Yeah. So fire mm. just goes around you and you f- you feel very I immediately just flash fire and then smolder out. <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> These sorts of things happen to the best of us, my man. Perhaps we should get you to bed and go. go we could go get those fellows tomorrow. I mean, that, as, I uh, drunk, I am. as that happens, Toblin makes his way over because there was a giant flash fire in the middle of his bar as a guy fell over. He's like, "Are you? Are you all right?" Never better. Okay, uh, it's it's time for him to get escorted up to his room. Could you perhaps carry him? Toblin, sure, sure. And he picks you up, and he carries. I let you it. I let it happen. He carries <laughs> you up the stairs. I'll grab like the bottom of his feet, but no, I'm not helping. I have eight strength. <laughs> I'm using Mage Hand to just keep my head up. Yeah, and he will carry you up to, I guess, room three. Thoroughly disappointed in both losing my partner in crime <laughs> and attempting for the fifth or sixth time to light that pipe and being <laughs> unsuccessful. <laughs> I can't even get this thing started. Uh, oh, you took him out, man. I'm gonna, Hilarious. I'm gonna go give a peek outside to see if them, them horses have been magically stabled. Uh, you see that there is, like, they've got there's like a a tie off post, right? And you can see that there's like a tie off post, and you can see the female bartender like on the roof with like a nail and like a hammer and like there's a piece of like plywood like leaning over <laughs> she's trying to nail to make us like to uh, make an extra overhang to go over my the... god they save big money at menards How about that? <laughs> i am going to be enthused that they're they're putting together you know this mini manger over here yeah they're gonna make a stable yeah. they said they they're good for it and if there's some hay on the ground to tie off that's I'm gonna hey, go back. A bag of acorns, perhaps, for them to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Spanish pigs, yes. So, yeah. The and ones with the black hooves. That's... <laughs> and she's up there and she's got like nails in her mouth and she's like spitting them and hammering in this piece of plywood. And she's like, I told you. I told you we'd make a stable. Three gold renovation and a five gold party. Yeah. I think it's time to go to bed. What? Hmm. Bishop. What? I must bid you adieu. It's time for this old man to hit the hay. Okay, sleep well. Sleep well. To bed. 
Uh, and Toblin is there kind of getting Seneth settled into his bed. Make he... sure he's sideways so he doesn't throw up on himself. All right. And he kind of like rolls Seneth over onto his side. I give him a nice little tuck in, a little pat on the head, leave him a jug of water. And I'm like, good luck, buddy. <laughs> and I, I head back downstairs. And yeah, Toblin <laughs> kind of leaves him there and then heads back downstairs as well. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> Small pat of butter. <laughs> yeah, something. All right. Put my um, hand in a bowl. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, that'd be one we way just we it. just established rapport. I don't want to do that yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you guys head to bed, and Soot, and it sounds like Soot and Bishop are still up. And what's your guys' plan for the evening? I mean, I think we are settled in at this point. I'm willing to just hang out for a little while and then head to bed, just watch the fire for a little bit, and then, uh, yeah, perhaps have a, a nice cup of tea and then head on out. Mm -hmm. All right. Same. All right, so we will fade to black next morning. Everybody gets a long rest that they wanted oh. to get their spell slots back to be Thank able God. to be petty for Featherfall yet again. Uh, I regret nothing. I, I, I know. Uh, I regret it a little bit. <laughs> I mean, listen, it could have been worse. There could have been a fireball cast in that bar. Listen, mm -hmm. it could have been. I could have murdered an entire village. <laughs> Easily. And that's when the Red Brands offer to let you join. Because you're just taking out half the town. Perfect. And the whole track of this campaign changes real quick. <laughs> Isn't that just D&D, &D, though? Mm -hmm. I pledge my allegiance to you, Banshee. Yeah. <laughs> I took that sword. He was coming to kill you. <laughs> All right, so it is the next morning. So you guys are able to gather together. Toblin's there with, like, he's got some more food. I was going to um, say, I'm ordering breakfast, bacon, sausage, patties, hash browns, the nine. Yeah, he's got pretty much all of that. Slice um, of pie for me. And yep. some hot water. All right, I'll give you... Hot water and a. Are you are you making tea or are you just drinking hot I'm water? I'm making like tea. A sociopath. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm drinking tea. I just I have my own tea leaves. So if he could make. Oh, me but hot I'm water. the pretentious one. <laughs> oh God forbid! I, sorry, I I bought these with money that I made myself. Ooh. So if I have a luxury, I opened up to you tonight, and you're already weaponizing it. <laughs> Well, you're making fun of the one thing that I do for myself, which is have a fine tea set. That is fine tea, though. Yeah. Uh, I, I pour you a cup as we discuss it. As, as we're just rich person banter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so you guys have your breakfast, eggs, bacon, sausage, hash brown patties, whatever it is. And yeah, uh, everybody seems to be good. Tobin says, listen, I don't know what you guys are. Are you planning to, are you guys going to be sticking around for a while? Or are you guys just like a one night stint? How long do you think you guys are going to be here? Just out of curiosity. I think a couple nights, right? <coughs> Very least, right? We've got the thing with the book. We've got the thing with the body. And we've got the thing with the rock seeker. We've got a few things. So, yeah, at least a few nights. Can you? Can we hold our rooms? Oh, yeah, that's fine. I just want to get an idea in case other people show up. Yeah. I know to be able to turn them away. So, listen, I saw you casting the spells here in the bar last night. So, clearly, you're at least accomplished to a degree with magic, which I feel like means that you're definitely... I can solidify that you're probably adventurers. Is that an accurate assumption? You seem like you were having that sort of camaraderie session around a bar with food. Like, I've seen that happen before. It's usually yeah. adventurers that do that, yes. so I just figure... Astute observation. That right. is us. Adventurers. Mm -hmm. Get the tea. I'm still using Mage Hand to drink my tea. Of course I rolled the 16. We're fine. Okay. <laughs> so... We're presumptuous. The, uh, you guys probably heard about the Red Brands, right? You heard about them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen. I'm not saying anything official one way or another, because I'm, you know, try to keep a neutral stance on things that i feel like they've gone too far all right like i don't it. know if you've probably not you guys are new to town so thel dendrar he he's a wood carver in town and he mm -hmm. kind of like gestures at like some of the nicer like the bar and some of like the nicer pieces on the mantle and stuff he's pretty talented wood carver here in the town 
And they came to kind of shake him down. And he stood up to them mm-hmm. when they came by his shop and they kind of like were bullying his wife. And he stood up to them, which provoked a fight and they murdered him. Several people here in the town, nobody's saying it, but several people saw it happen. And then mm-hmm. they grabbed his body. And now his wife, daughter, and son have all gone missing. Oh, no. Well. And nobody's like, that happened? And nobody hears really. No one's like, some people, like, we're mostly just merchants and, and shop goers. I mean, it says, you know, Darren Edermath, who owns, you know, the orchard, they say he used to be an adventurer. But he's older now. He's right. been retired for a while. So, like, there's not a lot of people that are really, like, willing or able to stand up to these people mm. and uh, Harbin's useless with it comes to that so 100 percent. i don't know if if there's anything you guys could do even if it's just like i don't know rough them up a bit and kind of like say hey you know this shit's not gonna fly in this town i don't really care what happens to them that was a pretty he was a good guy and a good friend and he didn't deserve that just for trying to stand up for his wife and his kids. So I don't know if, again, I, I, I don't really have, I mean, you guys can stay here for free and I we can keep providing you food and stuff. I don't really have much else to offer, but if you guys could do anything, I, I, you know, other people may not come out and say it, but I know, I, I know they'd appreciate it if somebody were to take a stance against them. Doblin, you are a good man and a good friend. And we will investigate this further. Hopefully his wife and child are still alive. And we had other things to do, but not nearly as pressing. I look at <coughs> the three of you, right? No, this seems like it's priority number one now. Pull out a small wooden pickle. <laughs> don't, don't. He carved this for my Yule tree over a decade ago. Became my lucky pickle a long time ago. Bronson, where do you keep that? Pocket. Front mm. right, to be precise. The perfect place to have a lucky object, without a doubt. You're telling me that nobody else is going to be able to get a lucky pickle like me. Put it on the old Yule tree. All because he stood up to these sons of bitches. Seems so. I don't know if he gave a pickle to you. But this pickle means a lot to me. Tuck it back in my pocket. Where can we find him? He says they hang out mostly over at the Sleeping Giant. That would be your, your safest bet, the Sleeping Giant. Right, that's where we tower. were told not to go there. Yeah. That, that makes sense. That tracks. That'd be, that'd be where I'd head. I, I know there's more of them, but that's like their hangout place. Mm. So I'd do start there. Do they live there. here in town or do they commute? You know, I'm not really sure. I try not to be outside after dark, honestly. Mm, do they um, Uber together? So I'm not I'm not sure, <clears throat> but I know that's where they hang out when they're here. So I would I would start there probably. What if and I'm sorry, I, Toblin, you understand, right? I kind of pull everybody into into a little little group huddle. Right. What if we strike them? As you get closer, I I'm moving right. What if we? <laughs> what if we? God, the pickle's rubbing against me. What if we? <laughs> Not a large one. Huh? That's <laughs> right. During the, if they're out and about, what if we go to the hideout and oh, strike yeah. them there first? Well, it seems like they might sleep all day in the hideout and then come out tonight at night to drink. Sleep all day. <laughs> that checks out. But there's right, also that then. secret tunnel if we're what? if we're all getting in close. And <laughs> yeah. I'm not comfortable as getting as close as Bronson, but no. I think Can I think that's a good tunnel? idea. Yes. A secret tunnel that they use, why couldn't we? Right. Just, every now and again I pop up to look around. Just prairie dog. <laughs> if you're a prairie dog in that bag, go ahead and excuse yourself. No no no. That's what I've got Machi for. Oh God. <laughs> I never thought about that. No three Anybody's... seashells when you have a. I lean back. I'm sorry. There's a lady here. Gosh. Yeah. Sorry. I don't even be a lady. You don't even know. 
This is very yeah. true. I learn yes. things all the time. So it's fine. Uh, She's seen worse for me. Anyways, so do we want to go in strike hard and fast, or do we want to go sneaky through the tunnel? They, they changed. I'm sorry. I'm just reading character descriptions. They've changed so many characters that I just never realized. <laughs> Ted's, having, Ted's having his own little adventure. Well, right. well oh, don't, and don't forget that we, we've, we've got to find the leader. Yes, this right. glass staff. Did the tunnels lead to the hideout? 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 I mean, right. I assume so, based on oh, Pips. What was it Pip? Yeah, they have a secret tunnel in the woods that Carp Alderleaf knows about. But I think perhaps we go to the Sleeping Giant. We make a ruckus and a fuss, and bring you them know, to us. Detain those suckers there. Bring them to. Bronson, do you know is there a jailhouse here? Bronson, you would know that Harbin, the town master's hall, does have two like serviceable cells there. Harbin Vester's got two cells, but he's already too chicken shit to do anything about it. That's right. That's why we're handling it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Toblin, my good sir, how much would it cost to build jail cells? He says, well, I mean... I mean, you, you built it stable overnight. We're working on it. I mean, I imagine you're going to want... Well, that's this is carpentry, right? You want... You want a, sakes, this isn't the... You want a mason, around. right? You want a mason mm, for... Play, a, yeah. Ideally, right? So, I mean, I not... I'm not a mason. Okay. I mean, maybe we... You know, I, I, I'm not sure. There's probably... I, I don't know. Maybe somebody else... Other, do, do, do you guys want these people... Dead or gone? I don't care. This, listen, our town is, it's a nice small town. You know, I, I don't know if these, you guys are the adventurers. Do these guys, like, you drive them off? Do they take revenge and come back later and then? Yeah, we should just kill them. I just want to make it very clear that I'm not telling you to kill them. But yeah, if yeah, you no, do, I'm, just, no. I'm okay with it. Right, it's plausible deniability. Like when Wait. my father says, "Shut down the mine." Oh, there's people inside. Well, you know. Uh, what? Sure. What? We let them out. Anyways, mm -hmm. so I think plan is. Sorry, you can go now. Thank you. Oh. Unless there was more. Well, no, I was just gonna say, like, I mean, sleeping giants not that far away, so you definitely, right. I would try there. I heard, you know. There were other things kind of going on. You could try. I mean, realistically, there's not a whole lot of town here. If you wanted to talk to other people before you go to deal with mm. them, it's probably not. It's not going to take you all day to hit up any other places you want to go before you go there. Right. So, you know, if that matters to you, right? Yeah. Carp and, and, and Quellen are just over. They're just down, you know, a little bit south of here. I mean, it's probably two feet from here if i'm looking right. at the map so oh uh, other question for you sure Have you heard anything regarding a leader glass staff i haven't really dealt with the red brands at all i mean harbin right he was the one who kind of has had probably more of the interaction with him than it anybody all else comes back to harbin bronson we might have to just knock on the door oh and i just want to say because some for some people this might freak him out a little bit, but you know, Darren Edermath, who and is the old retired adventurer over at the at the orchard, he's apparently this is Ted saying this, not Toblin, a drow, which is a new thing for this oh. adventure. He was not a drow originally. Was and everyone just my, a human here? I feel like most people were humans. Yeah. yeah. Was this rural Midwest America? <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, kind of. But yeah. anyway, I just want to make the point that he's a retired drow adventurer. But you know, he's a good, he's a good guy. Uh, Tends his trees at night, perhaps. I mean, it, po possibly. But either way, moon suckle apples. Just well, what's good might be like I said. You know, don't know what kind of information he has. I mean, he's. They don't really seem to, you know, he doesn't really do much adventuring or anything like that anymore. He's retired, but who knows? Maybe he's got more information from that keen adventuring eye if he's seen stuff going on. I don't know. But just as a heads up, he's a drow, just so it doesn't surprise anybody. Mm. 
which like it did Ted the dungeon master when he read that. <laughs> so. Here's how I see it. If we give away our element of surprise, it's on. Mm-hmm. We should probably investigate those tunnels first, mm. see where they might lie, and then we make our choice. Sounds like a plan. Right. If those tunnels are one way in, one way out, tunnels collapse all the time. I'd say we've got a lot of work ahead of us, and there's nothing else for it but to get to it. Toblin, you are a phenomenal host, and we will see you for supper. And he will retire back to the bar, and I think you guys are going to make your way, potentially, sounds like you're going to deal with the red brands, yeah? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're going to go yeah. find the tunnel first. Listen, the Banshee's not going anywhere. That's yeah. fair. That is the fair. book is fine. Everything yeah. else is not really a big deal. But then there's a missing wife and child. Yeah. Us. Yeah. All right. Well, it sounds like we have a variety of different locations to make our way to when we pick back up next week. So I uh, will take some time. You know, in the next week, kind of tell me where you're thinking the order of places you want to go to first, and then that way we can just roll right into it come next week. So with that, we'll just kind of go down the line real quick and have a little sign off here, and then we'll let everybody get off to whatever it is. Probably bed for some people, but otherwise. Robert, tell us about you and where people can find you. I play D&D all week. You can find me at Captain Robert at everything. Come along for the journey. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. Also, he's always live on Twitch, so don't let that fool you. Whether he's live, live, or in streaming, it's never... You'll never know. You'll, I'm no, just one an NFT. <laughs> no one does. No one does. Just LB. an NFT. <laughs> Go ahead, LB. I'm LB Hack em Up. You can find me and my personal stuff at LB Hack em Up on Instagram, threads, all that fun stuff. But my channel is Hack Recklessly. The next time we're going to be live is tomorrow. They're going to be playing Themeless Thursdays, a bunch of party games. And then we'll be back on Sunday for the thrilling conclusion of our Blades in the Dark game, where I'm learning I'm not allowed to plan. That's very difficult. <laughs> That's it. All right, Jonathan. Hello, let's start of this. Jonathan, I played Senif. You can find me everywhere as Latinos Against Spooky Shit. I go live on Twitch Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You can catch me this week, Friday, as we play some more spooky games. And then Saturday... I will be playing over at Crit Hit Chronicles, our Final Fantasy VII remission campaign as we count down for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So come check out this fun little wacky adventure that we're going on. Awesome. Jake. Ah, yes. Uh, you can listen to the podcast that I do. That's Legends Rerolled. We're on Spotify and all the other guys, but it's just been a great time here and it's been super fun. Ted? Thanks, Jake. Well, I'm Ted, and this is Nerd Immersion. You guys will be here. I'll be actually here probably definitely Saturday for a large portion of like the day and maybe Friday night. Just I don't know what I'm going to be streaming. I got a bunch of stuff I got to review, so I'll probably use it as like a work stream. So it forces me to actually review the things, but then I can just do that with other people and chat about it because I've still been working through cutting up the last 17 hours worth of streaming I did at the end of December. But yeah, we'll be back here live on this channel Monday night with with Baldur's Gate 3, where we're in we're about to do all of the things in Act 2, really just knock out most of that. Hopefully Tuesday I'll be back with my in-person game. Matt's ah, you never know with that. And then Wednesday we'll be back here. So uh yeah, lots of good stuff coming out here on the channel. Again, this is gonna be available as a podcast as well as an edited down version over on my second YouTube channel. So lots of ways to catch up on Fandelver and below. And who knows how we'll get derailed by trinkets next week. So we'll see what happens then. Uh, Thank you all so much for watching and we will see you next week.